Carroll had a better recruiting year than anyone, but it didn't help in a frustrating loss to LSU. Senior quarterback Craig Stump couldn't move the Texas A&M offense. And freshman Lance Pavlis had more questions than answers when his turn came. Keith Woodside has never been a question mark. He'll soon become the Aggies' all-time leading receiver. But A&M's key is defense led by John Roper, an exceptional athlete whose eyes will be focused on Washington. Field in College Station, Texas. The 12th ranked Huskies 2-0 against the Texas A&M Aggies who are 0-1 after an opening game loss to LSU. Good afternoon everybody, Mike Patrick along with Lee Corso and it's great to have you with us for college football. The Huskies quarterback is named Chris Chandler. He's a good one and the exposure he'll get in today's game could go a long way in determining how well he's going to do in the Heisman Trophy race this year. Chandler's a good player. Remember the neighborhood when you were a kid, you'd always pick the kid you yeah. think and choose up that you could win the game with? If this was a pickup game, you'd pick Chandler. He's an exceptional athlete and a good leader. Now, the problem with Texas A&M is their lack of a quarterback. We'll see at least two today. If things don't go well, maybe three. Well, there's a lot of pressure on Stubb, the quarterback number nine. The reason is, you know, for the first time in 26 games two weeks ago, Texas A&M did not score a touchdown. So they, if he doesn't do well early, I'd expect the hook. All right, the way this game matches up, it's the power and size of the University of Washington against the speed of Texas A&M. That kind of a matchup, who do you like? Okay, you put it this way. Chandler plays for Washington, I'd pick them. If he played for Texas A&M, I'd pick them. But since he's at Washington, I think he could be the difference between these two teams. All right, it's Texas A&M against the University of Washington, ranked 12th and undefeated. And we'll be back with the start of this ball game coming up in just a moment. Live CFA football is being brought to you by the makers of the CFA VCR College Bowl Game. By Bud Light, everything else is just a light. And by Olympic Stain, protects the American dream for over a century. Some interesting matchups, particularly size versus speed. Team. They have the athletes, you saw the receivers, they're all good players. So, uh, the jury's still out on BYU. Pittsburgh, look out for the Panthers. Our final score, Pittsburgh 27, BYU 17. We'll wrap things up after this timeout. And Anthony Taylor, deep to receive, standing on the goal line. He's had four returns so far this year, averaging 17 and a half yards a return. And we are set to go from College Station, Texas. A big test for the University of Washington. The Huskies 2-0, ranked 12th by UPI, 10th by the Associated Press. Texas A&M knocked out of the top 20 a week, uh, two weeks ago when they lost to LSU. They are ranked 23rd by USA Today. And taken at the two-yard line. But stops short of the 20. Texas A&M will start from there in not real great field position. The quarterback will be the fifth-year senior, Craig Stump, out of Port Arthur, Texas, completed only five out of ten in their opening game. The running backs, Woodside and Gurley. Woodside more of a receiver, and he will uh, quite soon be the leading receiver in A&M history. There are the receivers. Taylor and Harris, the wideouts, did not catch a pass against LSU. The interior line a little banged up, a couple of injuries, and the center, Matt Wilson, coming off summer knee surgery. And the tackles, 280-pound bookends, Cheek and Bartlett. Woodside and Gurley start behind the quarterback, Stump. And Stump wants to throw on first down, throws it out to Woodside. And Woodside trapped in the backfield and dumped for a loss of over 10 yards. And it's Martin Harrison, the strong side linebacker, who sets down as a defensive end. And there's a look at Harrison out of Bellevue, along with Travis Richardson from Olympia, Washington. The defensive tackles, huge. Dennis Brown at 302 and Brian Habib at 275. The three linebackers, excellent players, especially Rill, who has been the leading tackler for two straight years for this ball club. A&M knocked all the way back to its own seven-yard line, second and 20. The first pass completion loses them 10 yards. Draw play. Woodside hitting the backfield, dumped at the three-yard line. Once again, 
It's number 56, Martin Harrison. And the University of Washington defense just totally dominating Texas A&M so far. They're the corners, Lilo Lang and Art Malone. Malone had a great game against Purdue last week. And the safeties, Will Rideout, who was a rover back, more of a linebacker, and David Toy, who was starting for the injured Darrell Hall. Texas A&M coach going the wrong direction. Let me tell you what I don't like about it right away. I've always liked to have my linemen come off and hit people early in the ball game, not set up. Third down and a mile inside their own five. They'll go with Woodside on the toss. A little running room, but only gets it out over the seven-yard line. Knocked down by David Rill out of Port Archard, Washington. And this will bring up a, a punting situation for Texas A&M, and that helps keep the crowd out of it in a hurry. Not only that, they should get excellent field position because they've got great punt return people. And as Riley, he could go all the way. Andre Riley averaging 5.6 yards. Sean Wilson to punt, the son of former Kansas City great Gerald Wilson. Short kick, but it will get the bounce for Texas A&M. And into Washington territory at the 48-yard line, a 43-yard kick. Our first look now at Chris Chandler, the Heisman Trophy candidate out of Everett, Washington. He'll have behind him Vince Weathersby and Aaron Jenkins, the starting fullback. His receivers, outstanding wideouts, Franklin and Slater. The starting tight end is Scott Jones. The interior line, Zandowski is an all-Pac-10 candidate, or an already made all-Pac-10, is an All-American candidate this year. And the big tackles, and we'll see if Washington can dominate offensively. They'll give it to the fullback, Aaron Jenkins. Stopped at the middle of the line and driven back. And if that first offensive series is any indication, it's going to have to be the Texas A&M defense. There is the front three. Sammy O'Brien, the best player among them, the nose guard, did not play particularly well against LSU, however. The outside linebackers, they will be coming after Chandler. Roper and Wallace, very, very fast. Jackson and Batiste, hitters at the inside linebacker. Second and 10, the ball spotted at the University of Washington 49-yard line. Chandler checking off. Both wide receivers to the near side. And he overthrows Daryl Franklin. Here's the defensive backfield. Alex Morris and Gary Jones are the corners. The safeties are outstanding. Chet Brooks and Kip Corrington, they combined for 31 tackles against LSU. That's great performances by them, but if your safeties make 31 tackles, you've got some problems. You win when your linebackers make all the tackles. Yeah. Third down, eight yards to go. Chandler has some great stats through two games. This is Slater in motion. Comes the blitz. Chandler unloads and hits Slater. He'll be stopped shy of the first down, however. Gets down to the 45-yard line. Mickey Washington in on the nickel coverage. Makes the tackle, and it brings up a fourth and four. Well, that was an interesting play because the first pass that Chandler threw, you could tell he was excited because he threw up his back leg and it flew almost into the stands. The second one is a little bit better. Brandy Brownlee back to kick, and Rod Harris deep to receive, standing in his own 10-yard line. Brownlee, both the punter and the place kicker, a barefooted artist, and he sails this one high toward the end zone, and it takes that bounce. So Texas A&M, after a 45-yard punt, will start from its own 20-yard line. We're in a scoreless first quarter from College Station. Ten minutes and 38 seconds to go. Washington and Texas A&M, the Aggies with their second possession. They lost about 15 yards on the first possession. It will be interesting to see if they can do anything with its University of Washington defense. Woodside trying to get outside, cuts it back. Good move at the 30. Woodside with a chance to break it. 61, McGuire makes a good block. He cuts it back here, and now watch him take off. Malone, whose dad played it at Arizona State, just does catch Woodside. Well, it's a great play by Woodside, but you see what I like about that? They came after him now. They didn't mess around dropping those linemen back. 77 yards. And Woodside will go to the bench to get some oxygen back. And Gurley and Horton are in the backfield. 
carry him down to about the two as Horton, the freshman out of Tatum, Texas, carried. Albert Tofono, one of the linebackers, the first man in on the stop. And boy, what a turnaround, Lee. I mean, the first possession, they lose 15 yards on three plays, and then they break that one. Because it was a theory. They were, they were passive at the very first. They were playing pass, looking pass, negative plays. Now they've gone on and tested them. Man on man, who's a better man? Second down and goal for AM. They'll give it to the fullback, Matt Gurley. Touchdown, Aggies. put up uh, one of the trick formations on the extra point and now they'll shift out of it and go back to a, a regular placement formation and now there's no holder no holder and Scott Slater the kicker says I'd like to do it myself but I need some help and stop the quarterback is over at the sideline I think stump was celebrating the touchdown and forgot all about his duties as the guy to hold for Slater. He you know was why? over at the side. I'll tell you why. It's a perfect thing. They haven't scored this year, right? That's right. <laughs> this, is the this is the first time they've ever scored, so therefore they haven't practiced the extra point. Good point, Coach. But this costs them a timeout early in the first half. We have 10 minutes and 28 seconds to go first quarter. And Woodside, 77-yard first, set this one up. Slater will try the first point after of the season for the Aggies out of Stump's hole. And he's got it. All right, here comes number 38, Gurley. He's nice and strong, 210 pounds. He goes over the right guard, Fontenot, who was their most consistent player last year. Nice, tough, hard-nosed run for a touchdown. 7 nothing. Texas A&M early first quarter. We'll be back in a moment. In a hurry and leads Washington 7 nothing. And Lee, that's got to give a great boost to this offensive squad that really struggled against LSU. I found most of the time when teams are losing, the best thing to do with them is let them be physical. And, even if, and don't worry about making a mistake. Just go after people and hit them. Scoring drive, and it doesn't take long if you throw in a 77-yarder in that. The 12th man kickoff team takes the field. Before this year's LSU game, the longest return they had given up in four seasons was 39 yards. Nobody had gotten across midfield against this group of walk-ons. And if you've never seen them before, they are something to watch. They really go after the guy that gets the football. You know they have a special dressing room for them? No one can walk in this dressing room except these guys. What a great tradition. Nobody wants to. <laughs> you walk in the room, they knock it down. The Aggies will kick off. Scott Slater is the man who will do the job. Deep to receive Andre Riley and Steve Jones. Riley at the six. Got a hole. Riley knocked out of bounds the 45-yard line, and it was the kicker who got him, Scott Slater. Steve Jones with a 38-yard kickoff return, and the 12-man kickoff team did not do it that time. Oh, I tell you what, watch number 45, Dean Berry, get destroyed right here. Boom, does he get smashed there by number 89, Bill Ames, and he smashes him to the ground. Next week, he's asking for the Gwynn softball team, that national championship team. First and 10 for the Huskies from the 44. They've got Weathersby and Jenkins in the backfield. Slater in motion. Like to roll out a lot with Chandler, and Chandler throws downfield, and it's complete to Slater at the 28-yard line. He was sandwiched between Carrington and Brooks, the two safeties. What a throw by Chandler. Oh, let me tell you, you cannot believe how good a pass this is. Now, you watch Slater go in motion, number eight. As he goes down, he'll break it out to get his man to lean to the outside, and he breaks it up to the outside. But watch Chandler lay the ball right over Brooks's hand, number 27. Oh, that was an awesome pass. Absolutely perfect toss, 28-yard gain, first and 10 at the Aggie 29-yard line. 
flag goes down. Looked like it was a delay of game against the Huskies or movement in the offensive line. May have been Kelly John Lewis, the big right tackle. He's listed at 295. Dead like ball. 305. Off. Illegal procedure. Tell me first down. Well, that'll make it a first and 15 for Washington. You get a look at Don James on the sideline. Does not get uh, the national publicity that a lot of other coaches that don't have his record do, Lee. Because he's over in the West Coast. That's you don't right. get his scores and things till late over in the East. Same thing with their quarterback, Chandler. I think one of the reasons he is not uh, right now in the thick of a Heisman Trophy balloting, that's where he wants to be. He runs the option this time, and up from the safety, Kip Horrington really hit him, and Brooks followed up. And we'll continually update you on scores as we go along all throughout the afternoon. There have already been some surprises, and uh, Fred Akers with a tough uh, go there against Louisville. Missouri with a third-quarter lead over Northwestern. Colorado beating Stanford. And Oklahoma State against Wyoming. That's a second-quarter score. We'll keep you up to date on everything as we go. Second and 11. What a shocker, Florida knocks off Alabama. After Alabama had beaten Penn State. Chandler under pressure, just flips it out to his fullback and it's dropped by Aaron Jenkins. Boy, was Chandler cool as Roper was right in his face and he just found the open man. Oh, but you watch John Roper come in on him that time, but that's what makes Chandler special. It's from the open, Don low, watch him. He throws the ball over, doesn't intimidate him at all, but number 29, Aaron Jenkins, doesn't look the ball into his hands. Remember, young people watching the game, look it into your hands before you start to run. Chandler, two out of four for 34 yards, should be three out of four. He faces a third and 11 right here. At the A&M 30. for Franklin, it's completed the 13-yard line. And Kip Harrington on the coverage. And now one official said it was a catch, another official didn't think so. The A&M defenders certainly didn't think so. And now they're gonna call it back, and Chandler is unhappy. Remember, remember the rule says that you must have control of the football before you go down. Now let's take a look and see if he does have control of it. Watch him. Nope, the ball hit. That's a good call. He's got to scoop that ball up, and his hands have got to be underneath it before it's a completion. Looked like Isaac Smith took it on the short hop, and it's going to bring up a fourth and 11. And Brandy Brownlee will come on to try a field goal. He missed two a week ago. Has kicked three short ones. This one will be from 47 yards. Plenty of leg in it, and it's good. So Brownlee gets out of the doghouse for the University of Washington, and the Huskies get on the scoreboard. An official timeout. Nine minutes, 15 seconds to go. First quarter, A&M seven, the Huskies three. Here. And you never get to see these guys, but uh, they're the men that control the offense and the defense in most cases. Line drive kick. And this one will go out of the end zone. And Texas A&M will have to start from its own point. Brownlee with a very strong leg to transfer from SMU. Take a look at, uh, we'll also let you know about all the baseball scores. Tight pennant races, especially in that National League East. Minnesota battling for its share of postseason honors. And Detroit really on a roll. They're leading Milwaukee 5-0 in the ninth. And Toronto losing ground trailing the Yankees 4-2 in the night. Darren Lewis has come in for the first time, number 25, an outstanding freshman from Dallas, Texas. Jackie Sherrill said he's one of the most settled freshmen he has ever seen. And he is the future of their running game. And that's Lewis straight up the middle to the 29-yard line. Lewis at 5'11", 205, a true freshman. There's another kid on this club, Randy Simmons. It could have been the best two high school recruits in the entire country last year. Boy, I tell you, one thing I liked about Lewis this time. Watch the nice blocking by the line. The right guard fought and over pull. But watch just before the point of contact, he drops his shoulder. Boom. Boy, you cannot teach that. That's excellent because he's got three extra yards doing that one. Game of nine at second and one. And they'll go with Lewis on the toss. This time hit behind the line of scrimmage. An excellent defense by Washington as the Huskies came up in a hurry. Tom Erlinson 
who has a bad ankle, but is their leading tackler, has not practiced most of this week, but he's in there now, and he made the stop on that one. But you know, that was an interesting call. It's second down and one, and they took the ball, and they tossed it back instead of running that big girly in there and making a first down without taking a chance of losing yards, which they did. Interesting. Woodside on the last series ran 77 yards. Can't even get back on the field. They got Lewis in there. Third and four. And now Woodside has checked back in in a passing situation. And we've got a flag down as there was movement in the AM offensive line. Fontenot, number 67, was the man that moved there. Well, they're going to say somebody from University of Washington caused that movement. Okay, if you watch number 79 Brown here, maybe you can see it on the left side of your screen. But that's a bad call. Oh, you yeah. Not you notice the right guard right there, Fontenot, number 67. Once he moved his hands, that was a bad call by the officials. And Don James is letting them know, too. Absolutely. That guard picked his hand up, and he can't do that, and caused the movement by the Washington defense. Absolutely perfect, Mike. Well, you have to get away... Uh, you have to get away with uh, one every once in a while. You know, well, luck I, is part of this game. Yeah, not that wasn't the guy was trying to cheat people. Oh, no. He must have been in bad position and didn't see it. That's all. But it's a first and ten for the Aggies. And Lewis will check back in at tailback. <laughs> Lewis will get the ball following Gurley. Cracks across the 35 to about the 37-yard line. Middle guard Brian Habib at 275 makes the stop. And check out some of these other scores to see how uh, your team is doing. And the Ivy League opening up action this weekend. Big win for Cornell. Seven minutes, 26 seconds to go in the first quarter. Woodside comes back down, second and four. Jackie Sherrill likes to use a lot of people. And Stump goes back to throw. Four-man rush throws and throws behind his tight end, Gary Coster. Looked like Coster may have lost his footing and gone down. Stump was only five out of ten. As you see his career stats, five out of ten last week, two weeks ago, rather, against LSU. And uh, they wonder whether they can win with him. They wonder whether they can win with him because they got to develop a running game so he can play action. Remember, he did not have anything to do with that first touchdown. It was all Woodson. Stump 0 for 1 now his earlier what appeared to be a pass was actually a lateral running the option here and doesn't get much out of it as the outside linebacker uh, slash defensive end Martin Harrison number 56 makes the tackle well that was a nice defensive play Harrison played his position played his position played, and then made the tackle on stuff good play by Harrison number 56 Wilson comes in to kick Andre Riley number 23 is deep to receive standing at his own 23 yard line Wilson got the advantage of a roll on his first punt attempt. Once again, a short low kick that once again will take a bounce for AM and it's down to the 29 yard line. 33 yard kick, six and a half minutes to go, first quarter at 7 3, Texas AM. Tremendous rivalry, a couple of Heisman Trophy candidates in that one. We're getting a look at one Chris Chandler from the University of Washington who has already looked excellent here in the first half throwing the football. We'll give it to Weathersby on the toss and Weathersby. Didn't even get back to the line of scrimmage. Adam Bob, one of the inside linebackers, and Terry Price, the right defensive end, made the tackle. Bob is in there. Basil Jackson, normally the starter number 53 out of Hammond, Louisiana, has not been playing, and we have not heard why, but Bob gets a lot of playing time anyhow. And Jackie Sherrill loves his linebackers. These guys all go in the draft, every one of them. Second and 11. All four went last year. He says these four will go, and the four behind them will eventually go. Throwing for Slater, and he only got one hand on it. Run out of bounds by Chet Brooks. Chandler just looks very comfortable back there. Well, he's got that fifth-year experience. Remember, we talked to him yesterday to practice. Very calm, very cool. He's not taking this Heisman uh, hype. Anything, most important thing for him is to win the Pac-10 and go to the Rose Bowl. It's interesting with all the great players that Don James has had out at Washington. This is the first young man that he has allowed to be promoted for an award like this, and he really thinks he's something special. He won't say he's the best he's ever had. He's going to wait till after the end of the year to say that. Chandler now facing third and 11, and you can bet A&M will be coming with those outside linebackers.
They'll try the screen to Weathersby, and this one is overthrown. Had a couple of blockers out there. Aaron Wallace, one of the outside linebackers, was coming hard and right in his face and caused him to float it a little. See, the more they the more they get in the game, the longer the game is like this, the more the crowd gets back in there. The advantage turns to Texas A&M. Chandler a week ago had a poor first half against Purdue, then came back to throw three touchdown passes in the second half as Washington racked up its second victory. This is Brownlee punting to Rod Harris, waiting at the 20. And Washington one man shy. Getting that taken care of as Fred Schmidt comes onto the field. Booming spiral this time, and Harris driven all the way back to his 11-yard line. And gets up to the 24-25 before he is knocked down. A 53-yard punt and a 13-yard return. Update you on some more college football scores. Been a tough start for Navy this year, has it? Holy Cross with Gordy Lockbaum really rolling again. Interesting team to watch. Wake Forest and NC State with a terrible struggle. North Carolina had to come back, I believe, to beat Georgia Tech 30-23. Tar Heels lost a week ago to Oklahoma. Most people do. Don't they ever? Melvin Collins is in the ball game, number 32, along with Woodside. 33 for AM. And it's Woodside. Hit in the backfield and knocked down. Mark Poole was the man who took his balance away from him. It looks like the white side right now and Texas a and is definitely running to their left. They must feel that Cheek and McGuire, number 79 and 61, can beat the left side, Richardson, number 58. You can see that automatically before they're coming on that left side line. Richardson's only 236 pounds. You run the other way, you got Dennis Brown at 302, so it might be a bright choice. And now Brown shifts over to the right side. He's number 79. Woodside again. And Woodside gets up to about the 29-yard line this time. Bob Willick, number 96, a reserve defensive end, who had gotten a lot of playing time before Richardson, the redshirt freshman, came along. Yeah, and this uh, Beeb, number 91, you get a chance to watch him. He's 6'7", 275. Watch. He gets away from one man. McGuire, 61, blocks him. Pursuit down the line, 78. Bartley gets a piece of him, and he stands around on top of the pile, looking big. Third down, and call it six. And Stump back to throw. Here comes the blitz. He got rid of it, but threw it past Woodside. And Stump under pressure, unloaded in a hurry, and it was off target. They'll have to punt it away. Okay, that time Stump got a tremendous pressure right in his face. And I tell you what, right now, Jack sherrill has got a problem. He's winning 7-3, but his quarterback is not performing like a winner. And he's got to make a major decision coming up pretty soon. Got another young man on the bench by the name of Lance Pavlis, who is a redshirt freshman who played quite a bit and is expected to play quite a bit today. Big rush almost got there. Wilson really hangs this one up. Riley, no fair catch from the 31 and nowhere to go. Pretty punt by Sean Wilson, another redshirt freshman. A 34 yarder, plenty of time up in the air and no return. Now watch number 16 right here, Wilson. Now this is a penalty against Wilson if the referee says he's not touched and he does a little theatrical job. That's an un that's a sportsman unsportsmanlike penalty, 15-yard penalty right there if he thinks he's if he's kidding. Now, now watch he stays down. It's one, two, three. Well, I might as well go down. The guy's not paying any attention to me. Uh, referee probably walked by and said, "Get up, get up, or I'm gonna give you a penalty." Wasn't even good acting. <laughs> First and 10, Washington, their own 30. AM leading at 7 to 3, first quarter. Mike Packard and Lee Corso with him. Here comes the blitz. Got rid of it. Dumps it out to Weatherspeed. Chandler must be able to see out of the back of his head. He had a blindside blitz came coming, turned just in time to get rid of it. You know why? That's what they call a hot screen. He's reading that guy. If he rushes, he throws a screen. Now watch. If the man to his left is pressuring him, he throws the ball. That was that looks like Wallace coming in. If he doesn't, he throws the ball downfield. That's a read screen, Mike. Weathersby lost his balance, but still picked up between three and four yards. misdirection play and he gets to midfield knocked down Alex Morris came up to make the stop Chet Brooks had a piece of it 
but a good run by Weathersby, who was a very good all-purpose back. Watch number 66, Kelly John Lewis, 295 pounds pull from the bottom of your picture. There, see that big guy, 66? He clears him out as Weathersby, Weathersby goes down the field. Boy, I tell you what, John Lewis just laid and knocked three guys down. He's so big. Listed at 295, we had him at 304. First and 10, Huskies midfield. And it's the fullback, Aaron Jenkins, picking up two, maybe three yards. Adam Bobbin on the tackle, along with Leon Cole, number 74. And Dana Batiste off the bottom of the pile. That One thing about these AM linebackers, Coach, they're so fast. Even the inside linebackers run four, five, four, sixes. Great point. I was just going to make the point. That did not make any yardage, but it kept those linebackers inside. You've got to do that so they won't run from side to side. Even if it doesn't make any yards, it keeps them in there looking for that play. Well, watch linebackers. Keep an eye on Aaron Wallace, number 23. He runs a 4-4. Four, four. You like receivers that can run that play. Full back again. A couple of yards this time for Aaron Jenkins, the junior out of Stockton, California. Nose guard Sammy O'Brien was in on the stop along with Cole and Batiste again. O'Brien uh, did not play particularly well against LSU. Uh, they say he is a great player, but he really gets hyper. You know, one of the things that didn't play very well, they double teamed him a lot. Let me tell you something. Do it. A nose tackle that is single blocks is a dominating factor. But as soon as he gets double teamed, like this guy does, number 90, O'Brien, somebody else has got to make the tackle. Third down, five yards to go. Chandler sends both wide receivers to the near side and the tight end Scott Jones to the top of your screen. Chandler tripped over his own man and went down, and that was Kelly John Lewis, who had one of those 100-pound legs laying on the ground, and he tripped over. Well, let me, let me tell you one of the things they do. You'll see the linemen in a two-point stance, and they say, well, that tips it off as a pass. Well, it's third and ten. What are you going to do? Watch. They double-team <laughs> Roper this time. Remember the top of the show? Not only does he beat 66, he beat number 29, Jenkins. He was so intimidated. Chandler may not have even fallen over Kelly John Lewis. It's uh, easier to trip on artificial turf than it is on grass, and Brownlee just crushes one into the end zone. Chandler apparently lost his own balance and went down, so the Huskies have to cough up the football. I am will start from the 20. Illinois and East Carolina, that's a first quarter score. Missouri with a lead in the fourth. Colorado should be a uh, good year for the Buffaloes. Air Force really rolling. And UTEP with a first period lead. And we'll update you on all the West Coast scores as we go along this afternoon as well as the finals. And Tim Brando will be in the studio at halftime to bring us up to date on absolutely everything in college football. Darren Lewis and Matt Gurley are the running backs behind Craig Stump as A&M starts at its own 20. And they'll go with Gurley. You get about three. Something they'd like to do, Lee, is establish the running game. It allows them to run play action with quarterback stump, and it makes them so much more effective. Also, if you don't have a great quarterback, you don't ask him to win the game by himself. You bring in all the other guys and let the total team try to win. They don't have enough confidence in stump right now. They've got to either develop confidence in him or they've got to get him out of there because the team won't have confidence in him. At five of ten passes a week ago, he has been the starter for this quarter. We've got 50 seconds left in it. Lewis trying to cut it outside. He went down over one of his own blockers as they had stuffed things up. Dennis Brown caused a lot of trouble over there. He caused a lot of trouble. He's 6'4", 302 pounds. He's the heaviest player on the Washington team, and he just kind of laid there and just took everything and made a big jam. Brown is listed at uh, 302 pounds. He said he did a lot of off-season weight work, and some of his stomach moved up to his chest. He said the coaches really liked that. <laughs> Let me tell you something, he did a lot of off-season eating also. Yeah. <laughs> 16 seconds to go in the first quarter. Texas A&M leading Washington here in College Station, 7-3. to three, And it's a third and seven for the Aggies. Stump against a very small rush and a bad pass for Woodside. He bounced that one into the ground about two yards short of him, and you can hear some of the fans not terribly happy about the execution of that one. And that's one thing Jackie Sherrill told us here yesterday, that the fans here do not boo the players like they do someplace else. But I tell you what, that was almost a boo. That was as close as it gets. And he is over to talk to Jackie Sherrill. Sean Wilson, who has had a busy first quarter, is on the kick. Three seconds to go in the period. And Riley deep to receive at his own 40. Got a rush, and Wilson hurried it. 
and floated it up. Riley trying to get there for the fair catch and makes it in A&M territory at the 47-yard line. Good play by Riley to come up and save what could have been a big bounce after only a 24-yard punt. End of the quarter, it's the Aggies by four. Ready to start the second quarter. Texas A&M leading Washington 7-3. Jackie Sherrill on the sideline. Since the first year he was a head coach, he has never lost the first two ball games of the season. He'd like to keep that string alive here. And his backup quarterback, Pavlis, warming up on the sideline. Stump has only been 0 of 3. Let me ask you about a, a situation just before the end of this quarter. Uh, they ended up punting into the win with one second to go in the period. Yeah, on a second, on the third down, instead of going on that snap, sounds so quick, they should have waited longer, and they could have punted the ball at least 20 yards further with the win. But they would have had to have done that on second down because the third down was the incomplete. Or strung out a little bit. They'll give it to Steve Jones, who's into the ball game for the first time. He didn't practice Friday because of an ankle injury. Uh, number 31 was the only member of the 85 freshman class who was not redshirt. We wanted to use him right away. He's a junior now. Ball at the a and 45. It's going to be second and eight. Going into the win this time for Washington. Chandler, three out of eight so far, 36 yards. Got both wide receivers, Franklin and Slater, to the near side. And they'll go with the fullback pounding through there as Aaron Jenkins runs over Corrington and Gary Jones. You know where they ran? Over Zan Zanduski. Holy mackerel, 6'3", 290. John, uh, John Lewis, 6'8", 285, 295, 75, and 66. Blew them off the line. What a great block. 14-yard gain for the 233-pound fullback Aaron Jenkins down to the Aggie 31-yard line. is down. You can hear a crowd getting into it. Uh, <laughs> estimates of 60,000 fans here today at Kyle Field and College Station. Dead ball. Dead ball. Offside. On the offense. Let me I'll move it back to the 36. Check some other scores. Mississippi throwing a shutout at Arkansas State. Southern Miss winning by a touchdown. Michigan a final over Washington State. Louisville continues to lead Purdue. First and 15, Washington. This is Jones. Cuts it back down to about the 33-yard line. He was brought down by Dana Batiste and Sammy O'Brien following the play. Balls at the 33-yard line. Steve line. Jones, number 31, is a good player. Now watch the top of your screen. A good block by number 74. That's McCord. He blocks Roper out. Now McLeod blocks him out because number one, he weighs 280 pounds, and Roper weighs 215. That's called a mismatch. He's Roper call it that one. <laughs> 13 minutes, 14 seconds to go. Second quarter, second and 12. Washington. The crowd really getting into it. The blitz. And he got away from one, but not the second. Number 93, Guy Broom, was the man who made the tackle after John Roper forced him out of the pocket. Remember, we talked about at the top of the show the quickest play they had? John Roper, number 83. Watch him at the top of your picture. He beats number 75, Sandusky to the outside. It's too quick for him. Sandusky's a good football player. He's a first team all packed 10, but he's not as fast as that guy. And again, another mismatch. Speed against power. Speed one. Chandler lost a dozen there. And it's third and 23 for the Huskies throwing into the win. Oh, what a jump they had, and it's a draw. No flags are down as they go with the draw play to Weathersby. Yeah, it looked like both of those guys were offside. You know what the Washington has to do right now? They gotta, they gotta change their snap count. The defensive ends from Texas A&M are listening, and they're getting a the jump on that ball. They, he's got to go to a longer cadence. Brownlee will punt. Rod Harris standing deep at the 10-yard line, kicking into the wind. He just floats this one up. 
and inside the 20 at the 19-yard line. Now, Brownlee's not going to get a lot of credit for that because it was only a 22-yard kick, but he did what the coaches wanted him to do. He hung it up there. We'll be back in a moment. Live CFA football is brought to you by Dodge Import Trucks and the new Dodge Ram 50 and Raider. We're going places. By Heil Heating and Cooling. Depend on Heil. They're born to run. Aggie coach Jackie Sherrill has made a change at quarterback. He has inserted redshirt freshman Lance Pavlis, 6'2", 195, out of Tomball, Texas. Against LSU, he completed only three of nine passes for 25 yards. But this young man has a great deal of talent. The top quarterback coming out of Texas high school football two years ago. Under pressure here, throws over the middle, and he completes it to his tight end, Brian Ross. And Ross gets out to the 33. There is a flag down on the play. And this will bring it back. You know, that, that's an illegal procedure. And a lot of times that happens, Mike, because the quarterback's voice is different. And he changes cadence. And that usually happens the first or second time he's in there until the lineman. The only thing they feel Pavlis lacks is maturity right now. And after all, he's only a redshirt freshman. And there is Stump on the sideline, the fifth-year senior, who uh, failed to complete a pass and threw, honestly threw a couple of bad ones trying to hit Woodside coming out of the backfield. Tough place for Pavlis to start now. He's back at his own 14, facing first and 15. Got Woodside and Gurley in front of him in the eye. Woodside on the toss. Nice play there by David Toy, the free safety who stood him up. Toy is quite a story, too. A couple of years ago, he was the number one tailback. They thought he was going to be a star. He's playing on national television against Oklahoma State. Fumbled a football. The Oklahoma State team recovered for a touchdown, and his career as a tailback just disappeared at that point. We got an injury, and it's Erlinson, one of the inside linebackers, the young man who was uh, the leading tackler coming into this ballgame. And they're looking at his ankle, which was the reason he didn't practice the last couple of days. They're also looking at his knee, and they're taking that, that you know, side to side. Now, we get a chance to watch number 46, Erlinson, towards the top of your screen. Now, watch him. He moves to the left, moves to the left, and he gets knocked down. He gets kicked right there in the thigh, and that's all right. That's a, that hurts, but at least he didn't twist it. That's what I was worried about. Erlinson is tough. Let me tell you why I tell you he's tough. He played three years of lacrosse. If oh, you yeah. gotta play, then you gotta be tough. That's football with a stick. Lucky to have any key play. It's a second and eleven for AM. Pavlis throws far side, complete to his tight end Ross. Ross at 6'5, 235 is a big target. Bo Yates, the outside linebacker, brought him down shy of the first down. But you had a you had to like the way Pavlis stayed in the pocket that time. He had a little pressure. It's very difficult for a right-handed quarterback to throw the ball to the left because he's got to throw across his body. But he threw that one very well. Pavlis looks to the sidelines. He was hurt much in the spring, which set him back a little bit in his progress this year. Facing a third and four now. Four-man rush. And Pavlis really rifled that one to Woodside, and Woodside knocked down the 28-yard line. Fine play by Will Rideout, who made the tackle shy of the first down, and they'll have to kick it away. Great play about Will Rideout that time. Boy, number 24, Rideout came up and hit him and kept him from going that extra yard for the first down. Maybe. They're going to measure. Now they've moved the ball up closer to the 29-yard line from where we see it up here. And I'll be honest with you, it's a little difficult for us to see anything from up here. We can see Houston. Yeah, we can. And Houston's an hour and 45 minutes away. We're waiting for a blimp to go by under us. <laughs> but they'll bring the chains all the way across to measure. The chain was marked at the 39-yard line. This looks like it's going to be about a half a yard shy. And it is. Okay, so one thing to remember now, it was first and 15. Mm -hmm. They did make enough for a normal first down, so that, that's not discouraging for that quarterback. Here's some more updated scores for you. New York beating Toronto, and in college football, the big upset of the day, Florida knocks off Alabama. Ohio State beats Oregon in Columbus. Georgia and Clemson, big, big game for both of those clubs. They're tied in the third. That's Riley, who was deep to receive the punt of Sean Wilson, who finally gets a chance to kick with the win. Penn State over Cincinnati. 
You have to wonder about Cincinnati sometimes. Boy, they just load up with people who can really come after them. They need the money. <laughs> Wilson. A little bit better kick this time, and Riley from the 37. Oh, he needed one more step. He could have broken that for another 20 yards, but he's up to the 43-yard line. Timeout with 8.42 to go first half. Texas A&M 7, Washington 3. Time. Sunday night at 7 o'clock. Uh, the way things are going, you better watch that one. It may be the last significant uh, NFL show we have for quite a while. It's a great thing about college football. When was the last time there was a strike in this sport? I can't remember one. I can't either. Sometimes I kind of wish it would have been when I was uh, coaching, against, coaching against Nebraska, one of those guys. Yeah, strike just before the Nebraska <laughs> game, right? Chris Chandler, you see the stats on him. Throwing against the win here in the second quarter. They've gone to three wide receivers. Chandler with time throws for Slater in and out of his hand. Surrounded by three A&M defenders, Dana Batiste, the closest man to him, Chandler rifled that one in there, and Slater couldn't hold it. John Roper, number 83, drops off. He doesn't like to do that, but he does a pretty nice job against number eight. Slater right there. Slater should have caught the ball. He might have heard the hoofs. That means he might have heard Roper right near him. But the theory there was they thought that Roper was going to rush. That's why that play didn't work. Second and ten, Weathersby and Jenkins, the back. Excuse me, Tony Cummington, number 39, has checked in. They fake it to Cummington. Pitch to Weathersby on the option. And Weathersby has a first down. Great block out there by the tight end, Scott Jones, number 82, who really sealed the corner and let Weathersby get outside. It's a great play by Chandler also. This gives him an added dimension. You're throwing a ball, and all of a sudden, here comes a nice option. They fake the ball in the middle. Now watch him. He pitches the ball quick as Roper, number 83, hits him. Now it's good blocking down the field. There's your call of number 82, Jones. And there, number 8, Slater gets a block. Boom! Good play. That's a terrific play, the option play. First down at the Aggie 45. Covington, the fullback. He's got room to run. Got another good block downfield. It's a first down at the 34-yard line. That was Franklin, his split end, throwing a good down field block for him. Kip Corrington, the free safety, had to make the tackle again. Let me tell you, that's one of the great keys of a great football team when your wideouts block. Most of them are prima donnas that go down and catch the ball, they won't block. But watching the left-hand part of your screen, you're going to see number seven, Franklin, get a good block. Number 10, Corrington makes the tackle. Two straight first downs for the Huskies on the ground. Weathersby. Had some room, gets down to the 30, picked up about four on that one. Dana Batiste knocked him down. You know, one of the things they're doing right now is if you can't block Roper on pass, just run right at him. That's one of the things you use as a coach. They're just putting two big guys on Roper, who's 6'2", 215, because he's a great pass rusher, but he's being overrun by the big offensive line of Washington. Balls at the 30, it's second and six for the Huskies. 12th ranked in the nation by UPI, number 10th by the Associated Press. They're down by four. Missed, handled the snap, and Chandler has to fall on it at the 30. Went on a real quick count that time, and I don't think Chandler had his hands under the center, Brian Brostick. Or Brian Brostick. Maybe most of the time that's the quarterback's mistake because he split his hands. But now, the quick count is the reason I told you before. they got to vary their snap count because Texas a and was teeing off on him. That was an example of it right there. Third and seven, the fumble caused the loss of a yard. Franklin comes near side, Slater to the top of your screen. And they'll put Weathersby on the wing. A&M comes on the blitz. He's got time to throw and throwing deep for Slater. And Brooks knocks it away at the two. Chet Brooks with perfect coverage on Brian Slater. Isn't that beautiful? I mean, that, that is the essence of football right there. A perfectly thrown pass. Number 27, Brooks, against number 8, Slater. Watch. Oh, that tell you what. Brooks gets way up there and almost intercepts it. But you know what? It's a good thing he didn't because it would have been on the two-yard line. Chandler gets cream there by number 88, Price. But he got the ball out. They will try a 48-yard field goal into the win. And they got it. 
Randy Brownlee, 48 into the win. Isn't that the same guy that didn't make one last week? He missed two from 40 and 47 a week ago. He was in the doghouse. He's coming out of it. He's kicked two this week against Texas A&M. 7.48 to go in the first half, and we've got a one-point ball game. Tim Brando back in the college football studios here at ESPN. Let's take you to Clemson, South Carolina, where from hero to goat for Nathaniel Lewis, the punt by Clemson, deep into their territory, and the Georgia Bulldog fumbles it. It's recovered by Clemson, leads to a field goal by David Treadwell to give the Tigers a 16 to 13 lead. Let's get back to College Station, Mike and Lee. Tim, thanks very much. We have 7.48 to go in the first half. Texas A&M leading by one. There is Chris Chandler on the sideline talking to uh, his offensive coordinator upstairs. That's Gary Pinkle as the quarterback coach. Gary is the offensive coordinator, but he also played for Don James, the quarterback at Kent State. Coaches like to surround themselves with familiar faces, don't you know they? You know why? They're loyal to you. Yeah. You can't buy loyalty. That's the number one prerequisite for an assistant coach. That knowing where all the good restaurants are when we go on the road. 7-6. Brownlee to kick off. Harris is deep to receive. And Harris will take it at the 5. 25-26. Big hit at that point. Mike Allman made the tackle. Allman, the son of uh, the Seattle Seahawks, player personnel director of Mike Allman. There's Don James. And you know what that means, ladies and gentlemen? That means that the coaching profession and the athletic directors Respect Don James as a human being, as a man who produces it, because the more pro coaches they take from your program, the more that speaks of the head coach. The top one, then, is Jim Morrow, and I'm telling you, I'm making a prediction. Watch the Saints have a winning season this year. They've already got one, 1-0. One Pavlis back to throw, wants to air it out with the win, throwing deep, and it's almost intercepted. Art Malone had a chance to pick it off and couldn't hold the football. Boy, I tell you what, this is a nice throw. It's a long way with the win. Malone turns and plays this and almost perfectly. Watch. Number four almost catches it, but not quite. It's a good play. Watch his reaction now. This guy's a good young quarterback. He knows that he didn't throw it far enough, but don't worry, young man. There'll be plenty of more chances coming up in this ballgame. Second and ten. Pavlis running the action, passes it out to Lewis. And Lewis dragged out of bounds at the 34-yard line. Yates and David Toy, number 34, are over there to run him out of bounds. Mike, you might have just seen the, the quarterback and the tailback of the future for Texas A&M and the play. That option was a tremendous play, particularly the fact he pitched it out left-handed, and that's the most difficult thing to do in the game of football. Ball spotted at the 34, third and three after a game of seven on that last play. Lewis stays in, and Melvin Collins, number 32, is the fullback. Pavlis. Throws and complete for the first down to the 40. He's got his tight end, Sylvester Morgan. And Morgan then gives it a second effort and gets up to the AM 44 yard line. And part of the core of cadets, very happy about the way things are going right now for the Aggies. Well, there's that big target, 6'3", 235, but that time they rolled the quarterback out to avoid the pass rush, and boy, he threw that one right smack to Morgan, who made a great play on it. Of course, last year they had a tight end by the name of Rod Bernstein, who they used as more than a tight end. He was a wide receiver, everything else. But uh, tough to replace somebody like that. Lewis and Gurley, the running backs, on the first and ten. Center left early, and Pavlis fell on it. Matt Wilson was the first guy out of there, and everybody else was standing still. You notice why? He was checking off. And sometimes when a team checks off, they change the snap count, and that's not a real smart thing to do, especially with a young quarterback. Off start on the offense, still first down. So that'll cost them five and make it first and 15. Wilson may be quick, but he's not that much quicker than everybody else in that line, right? Huskies crept back into this ball game after AM hit them early with a touchdown. They've gotten two field goals to cut the lead to 7-6. to six. We're down to 6 minutes and 15 seconds to go in the half. Lewis. Took a real 
shot as he went up the middle. David Rill, number 38, who's led the team in tackles for two years, really gave him a belt. Lewis almost able to keep his balance. Oh, this is pr perfect isolation on Rill, number 38. Watch him. He sits in good position. He takes him on right there. He takes Wilson. Boom! And he hits him. But the problem was, I tell you what, this Lewis runs with great body lean. He ran right through that tackle. For a freshman, that's a good-looking football player right there, Darren Lewis. Picked up five on that carry at second and ten. Havlis three out of four, 21 yards so far, and has done well coming off the bench. Running the option again, loose ball. And Lewis got it back at the 40-yard line. And one of the Huskies is down. It's number 91, Brian Habib, who has done so much weight work this past year. The weight coach, Rick Hughley, said that he had gotten every bit out of his potential that he could, and how rare is that? He said he wouldn't be playing if he wasn't an excellent weightlifter. No, he wasn't strong what, enough before. He bench presses 500 pounds. And the thing I like about him, looking at the statistics, last year against USC and UCLA, two of the biggest games of the year, he got 25 combined tackles. Yeah. You like to see a guy make tackles in big games, not against teams you can beat. Exactly. And there's so many guys that improve their statistics against the little sisters of the poor and then disappear when you're... Uh, when you're playing somebody you really need to play well against. Third and 14, big play here for the Aggies with 5-12 to go in the half. Four-man rush, Pavlis with a lot of time, floats it down the middle and it's intercepted. Picked off by Art Malone, and now they're saying incomplete. Looked like Malone had it in the air, he was playing center field, did a great job. And he went down hard. From the end zone, you're going to watch number four, Art Malone, go way up. Now, he got isolated number three, Yates, on the back. But here comes Malone. Now, watch and see if the ball is... Now, I'll tell you what. That's a catch. You got it, because the ground cannot cause a fumble either on a pass interception or run or anything. That's a catch. You got it. He didn't cough up control until he hit the ground. Another look at it. Now, remember, they got Yates isolated, but here comes Malone right there. The ball comes out. That's a catch. It should be a first down for Washington going to your left. And the officials are talking it over right now as Malone out of Ventura, California, is staying on the field. That would be his third interception of the year. He also had a block punt against Purdue, and now the officials are trying to sort it out. Here's the call. The ball was incomplete and AM gets a break because they're calling it an incomplete pass but I thought that replay showed very convincingly and so did Don James although he didn't get to see the replay that it was an intercept that's why the National Football League invested in the instrument right there that play right there so AM gets a break they'll kick it away although Washington may end up with about the same field position and Stump is now in to kick it Wilson has not had a good day, and Stump had averaged 37 yards a kick last year as a punter. And he gets a beauty. Drives Riley all the way back. Riley after the 22-23 yard line. So on the ruling that it was an incomplete pass instead of an interception, they pick up 10 to 15 yards after the 45-yard punt. We'll be back in a moment. Don James on the sidelines, and he would like to get uh, maybe a call that goes his way. Well, we just found out this is an all-Southwest Conference crew. And the reason they do that is one reason, money. Mm -hmm. They don't want to fly guys in from the Pacific Coast when they get local guys. Now, when you go to Washington, they bring all of their own guys. That's the way it works, but it's only one word. I agree with the people that it ought to be independent officials from another conference for every game. I mean, there's enough money in this game to do that. Chandler on the option of Weathersby. Loose ball. Still loose, and AM has it. It's recovered by Tim Landrum, number 26. They'll spot that ball at the six-yard line. They run the option. Weathersby couldn't handle the toss, then lost it again. And the Aggies are in business. Ball in the six-yard line. First goal, AM. Now he comes down the line. Watch it. Now here's the mistake right here. 
after Weathersby drops the ball, don't try to pick it up. Just fall on it. Take a 10-yard penalty, but at least you got the football. Oh, boy, is that a fatal mistake. And the one thing we were not trying to do was infer that because these were Southwest, Southwestern oh. Conference officials, that that's why these calls were going the way they were. But uh, you, you hate to see, you know, that kind of thing exist. Aggies first and goal. They'll mark the ball at the seven-yard line. Lewis in a tailback. He'll get the toss. And gets nothing out of it as Washington did an excellent defensive job of closing that one down. And David Rill, number 38, out of Port Orchard, Washington, was the first man there on the stop again. Big series here with 420 to go in the half. Lewis comes out, Woodside will come back in. There is Weathersby, the young man who couldn't uh, find the handle on the loose pigskin. Pavlitz on second and goal, sends Woodside in motion. All day to throw, Pavlitz, touchdown Aggie! from Lance Pavlis, who had all day to throw and gets the seven points. And now they're going to have to take a timeout to avoid the same kind of mix-up they had on the extra point try in the first quarter. Celebrate a little bit too long, not get the kicking team on there, and you've got to take your time out. Well, it's an important play by Pavlis, but the key guy to this guy is number 33. They use him as a decoy, Woodside going in the flat, and then number 15, Waddle makes a great catch and holds on to the ball. The thing I liked about it, watch his reaction on this one. All right, college football at its finest. Percy Waddle, the freshman on the sideline who just caught the touchdown from another freshman. Lance Pavlis, and now Slater will go for the point after trying to make it 14-6. And does. 14-6, and Pavlos at the sideline may have earned himself a starting job, Lee Corso. Absolutely. What he did that time, he threw that ball a shot in between two men. And I'll tell you what, there's nothing like a quarterback like that coming off the bench excite the entire football program when he's successful like that. ESPN's live coverage of CFA football will continue next Saturday. 4 o'clock Eastern, 1 Pacific. What a great game this ought to be. Number 6, Miami, against the 11th-ranked Arkansas. And number 20, Boston College, or Penn State, rather, will go against number 19, Boston College. That one will follow the Miami-Arkansas game. We get to go to Little Rock. Let me tell you something. If, if Florida can beat Alabama and Miami destroyed Florida, how good is Miami? Yeah, I think they're very good. I think Arkansas is pretty good, too. And now the 12th man kickoff team trying to get the crowd into the ball game. That shouldn't be much of a problem. They're up 14-6 with 3.58 to go in the first half. About 60,000 fans on hand at Kyle Field here. And this kickoff team, these guys want to make up for two big returns they've given up the last two times they kicked off the football. Andre Riley goes deep. Steve Jones. And Slater will kick it off. This one go out of the end zone. There is a flag down. We'll check the call for you. And there's a flag on the play. It's down at the 40 yard line, so you have to make the assumption that it's an offside. You got a replay on number 45, Dean Berry. Watch, boom, he takes on one guy, number 16, Alden. Then the play is over, but he's still hitting people. I tell you what, he's trying to get back for those guys screaming. I'll tell you what, he's not hitting. Look at his left hand. He's got a big club on it. Let me tell you something. He's not hitting the same guy that hit him first. That's right. He's finding other guys more his size. Offsides on the kicking team. Replay the kick. 
So now they have to kick it again, and they will kick from the 30-yard line. And it's uh, a break for the University of Washington. They'll have a chance for a return here. It's not a break for Barry. No. These are all walk-ons, and these guys really go after the other team. You think that looks like a club, but they won't let you play in a game unless that's soft where you can't hurt people. The officials look at that 30 minutes before a ball game. So now Slater kicking off from his 30 with the wind about 15 miles an hour at his back. Jones from the one yard line. And he's buried this time as he got to the 22. It was number 14, David Fry, and number 12, Chad Adair, down on the 12th man kickoff team. So Chandler will start from his own 22-yard line, only 4 out of 11 for 40 yards in the first half. They have done a nice job containing Chris Chandler. He's got to be careful here, not turn this ball over and give Texas a another one, then they're really in trouble. Puts Franklin and Slater to the same side, top of the screen. Jones, a little misdirection play. Big hole. Jones to the 35. And he got a nice block from his left tackle, Rick McLeod, number 74. Gary Jones and Basil Jackson on the tackle. Jackson didn't play much, if uh, at all, in the earlier part of the ball game, and listed as a starting inside linebacker. 14-yard gain for Jones, first and 10-35. And we've got movement on the offensive line. That's 300-pound Kelly John Lewis. And when Lewis moves, it's pretty, pretty hard to hide it. Dead ball, false start, offense, tell first down. Take a look at this offensive line for Washington from left to right, 280, 280. 285, 299, and 304. Uh, 6 6, 6 4, 6 3, 6 3, and 6 8. Some of these guys are big enough to have bolts in their neck. And the offensive line averages from tackle to tackle 289 pounds. Jones on the sweep. Great cutback. And Jones gets out to the 37, 38 yard line. Corrington had to come up to make the stop again. He just left two guys standing on the outside. Oh, now, you know, re the reason they're running the ball right now is, again, they don't want to turn the ball over. Remember when I mentioned that? Now, watch him pitch the ball good. Here comes number 77. We see makes a good block. But I'm telling you one thing. I'm impressed with Kip Corrington. Watch number 10. Wow. He smashed him. Six foot, 175. All-American first team. All academic. Guy has a great average of 3.967. He has one B in his life. The fullback. Nailed, lost the ball. Joe Johnson hit him and took it away from him. Joe Johnson, number 99, out of Miami, Florida, 6'2", 210, into the linebacker. And he just made the play all by himself. Let me tell you something. Brian Bosworth, Bos what's his name? Brian uh, Bosworth? Bosworth. Never made a play better than that. Let me tell you something. He hit him and took the ball away from him and just stripped him. What a great play by Joe Johnson, number 90. Now watch this play, number 99 Johnson makes. Keep it right, he's a left side of the picture. Watch. Boom. He knocks the ball down and takes it away from him. What a play. Fullback Aaron Jenkins really never had a chance. Pavlis going for everything. Deep corner pattern is incomplete. Good coverage down there by Malone. And now it's intercepted. Malone got this one. Art Malone, who had one earlier and had it overturned as an incompletion, kicks Pavlis off on this. And really the first mistake that Pavlis has made since he's been in the ballgame. Well, listen, you know, let me tell you something. You might criticize the call, but let me tell you something. On page 14 of the coach's manual, when you get a fumble like that, you go for it all to try to get him disrupted. And that's why he did. Jackie Chiro is talking to him. Throw it long and let our man run it. He's been short twice, Mike, on long passes. Got two minutes and 29 seconds to go in the first half, so Washington gets out of some trouble here. Update Johnson, baseball scores, and the football will be along shortly. So the Huskies take over at their own seven-yard line. 
try to keep it on the ground with Jones and work on the clock a little bit. And Jones gets out to about the eight before Aaron Wallace and a whole host of Aggie shirts run him out of bounds. The well, fans right in front of us up here, and they stand up when there's any kind of a play. And it makes it a little uh, difficult for us to tell what's going on when they come to the near side a little bit. Chandler on second and eight, clock running with a minute 55 to go. Got Tony Covington, 39, behind him. Chandler, the quick out, and he completes it to Franklin. Franklin driven out of bounds. Looks like he had the first down at the 18-yard line. Alex Morris, the corner on the coverage. Well, you've got to have confidence to do that. He checked that off. He saw one-on-one -on -one coverage, seven Franklin against 30 Morris. He just called the number, and he ran a quick out and got a first down. Boy, that takes real confidence and experience. Chandler is a quality player. There's no doubt about it. The only question is, can he perform well enough on television to get the support of people who haven't seen him before? And right now, he has not played that well in the first half. Plenty of time. Rifles that one to Slater completed for 30. And he's down, a little slow getting up. And he knew AM was going to be coming after him, and it looks like he's holding the right hand or right shoulder. Now, take a look, and I think what will happen after he throws the football, watch. After he throws it, he gets hit oh. with a helmet. And let me tell you something, he got hit right in the elbow, and they're going to call a timeout right now to make sure he's okay. Chandler, 6 out of 13, 61 yards. That came a little late, too. And they're going to have to help Chandler off the field. 74, Leon Cole was the man who got to him. Now watch this. As he throws the football, it's all gone. The player is dead, and he still crushes him oh. right there. See, this? that's one of the things in football that they, they try to outlaw, hitting with the helmet first, because what you do not only hurt number 17, you also hurt number 74. Well, Cole just, uh, there was no hiding, and he just went after him with the helmet. Stuck it right in there, and we hope Chandler's going to be all right. Well, we can hope that he hit him in the ribs because he's got rib pads on. You see those kind of like uh, fat things underneath his arms? Those are rib pads. Yeah, it looks like he hit him in the ribs and not in the elbow. And this is what they have done. Chandler has been on his back six times. They've only gotten to him with a one sack, however. But those four hurries are four scares. We used to say, if you can't get close enough to hit him, make sure you scare him. Well, he'll be thinking about that last shot. It's a first and 10 for the Huskies at the 30. Chandler's going to test it to see if he can throw. And he throws this one short, intended for Daryl Franklin. Now, I've got my eye on him. I'll tell you, after he threw that ball, he kind of winced like it hurt him. I'll bet you that its ribs are hurt because that really wasn't his full arm motion. The best thing they could do right now is not try to get Chandler hit anymore, punt the ball, get it at halftime. Hopefully they can get out of here 14 to 6 and come back the second half and beat him. He is obviously uncomfortable. And it's second and 10 for the Huskies from their own 30. And they're going to go with a run. A flag is down. Now stop the play. A minute 27 to go on the first half clock. Texas A&M leading 14-6. Full start on the offense. That'll cost them five there. With a minute 27 left on the clock, Coach, they can run a couple of plays, take most of the time off that clock, and go to the locker room. But that thing killed him right there. When that penalty happened, that cost them 30 seconds right there. Don James on the Washington sideline coming up at halftime. Tim Brando will be here with scores and highlights. First half analysis. You'll be updated on everything that's going on around the nation. A couple of big upsets in college football so far. Probably a couple of more to come. Second and 15. Little shovel pass. Jones. Oh, what a great fake. Jones gets six yards, and he must have run 25. 
And that's the second time he has left somebody standing flat-footed with a great move. I've never seen a guy quicker than him play on the second team. That's right. The second team guy. Now, what they did that time, they invited everybody in to hit the quarterback Chandler Law. Come on, hit me. And they run a little shovel pass. What a terrific play that was. Good call by Don James and the offensive staff. And that is a completed pass because the ball was thrown forward. Third and five. Chandler. The wind's got that one, and Franklin comes back to make the catch. Flag is down. What a catch by Franklin. Had Gary Jones right in his face. Now, they may roll it. That may have well been out of bounds, but they threw the flag for interference anyway. Either one. Now, remember, though, if he comes, if he can come down inbounds and forced out, that's still a completion. We'll take a look what they call it here. Defense, automatic first down. And it will be interference. We never saw a sign from the official as to whether it was a complete pass or not. You take a look at this now. This is pass interference. If number six, Gary Jones pushes him that he hits him and doesn't give him a chance to catch the football. He's out of bounds, but it was a pass interference call. The penalty is 15 yards or an automatic first down. What great concentration by Franklin. I mean, Jones just used him as a stepladder, climbed right up his front. Still had the presence of mind to go up and make that catch. First down at midfield. Still plenty of time to go. 39 seconds. And they'd like to get in position for another field goal try. Three-man rush. Chandler for Franklin. Contact. Almost intercepted and no flag at the goal line. Excellent coverage as Brownlee warms up on the sideline. His last try at a 48-yarder. Alex Morris was back there. Watch, he sets his feet real good. Chandler does. Number 30, Alex Morris has got good football position. He's got good coverage on the guy, and he just can't quite catch it. Number 7, Franklin must be their deep threat because every time they go deep, he's in the picture. Chandler, 7 out of 16 for 71 yards. Franklin came into the ballgame averaging 24 yards a catch. So he's not used to taking those uh, short trips over the middle of the sideline. Four-man rush. They'll throw the screen to Weatherspoon. Cuts it back, and there's nowhere to go as he gets down to the A&M 45-yard line. Chet Brooks up from the strong safety position to make the stop. And Washington will stop the clock with a timeout with 18 seconds left. It's going to be a third and six situation. Strong as he is, they are not quite in the field goal range of Brandy Brownlee as yet. Okay, with well, Jackie Shearer and a gentleman that's white hat there is R.C. Slocum right there. He's a defensive coordinator. He's got his left hand on Jones. He's telling him, now look, keep him in front of you. Don't give him a big play. Let him complete it. We'll knock him. Keep him in bounds. Let the clock run and make him put the long field goal. That's what R.C. Slocum right there. He's a former assistant coach at the University of Southern California. Jackie Sherrill has always had great assistance, especially on defense. He had Coach Basio yep. of Pittsburgh. He's got R.C. Slocum right there. He's always had tremendous defenses. 18 seconds to go. He told us uh, when we were meeting with this in, in yeah. his office, you, you hire hire the best people you can get, get out of the way, let them do the job. You might notice why he's wearing a white hat and the other assistants aren't. Some of them aren't. The signal callers are the only guys that wear white hats so that the quarterback looks over there, he can tell which one he's looking for. Well, it has nothing to do with being a good guy anymore. No, no, white no, hats. no, no. The guys in the white hats are the guys that are signaling in. You see him. Now, Don James has a uh, purple hat. And he's also got a problem. His team is down 14-6. 18 seconds to go, third and six. And the Huskies have not done well on third down situations. Straight in motion. Here comes the blitz. Chandler stands in there, throws deep for Franklin, and it's incomplete. Gary Jones was back on the coverage. And it looked like miscommunication on that route. 
Now, if you want to watch, we talked about the top of the show. John Roper, now watch. Now, number 66, John Lewis gets him. 22, Weathersby gets him. And number 60, Bostek gets him. No wonder he didn't get in there. He had three <laughs> guys after him. They must have heard the top of the show. Somebody else must be open on that rush. <laughs> Fourth down and six. Don James says 14 seconds left. Let's go for it. And why not? And then jumped offside but got back in time. Here's a little delay to Weathersby on the draw. Weathersby's got the first down. He's down to the 32-yard line. And Washington will try to stop the clock again with seven yards to go. And that is just a great play call from Don James. He's given his chance to team to kick a field goal. Right, and what he did is, again, third down and long. They're going to come and get you, right? Come and get him. They set the bait with Chandler, and they run that nice little shovel pass to 22. Weathersby, he's got the presence of mind to get as much as he can. Now the clock automatic stops on first down. Now, you watch the defense. Watch everybody take off and pass coverage. The reason they're doing that is they don't want him to get a long pass. But there's that little shovel pass. Now, here's the strategy. He's got seven seconds to go. He probably doesn't have enough time to throw the ball. So, yes, he bring in, brings in the field goal kick. They will try a 49-yard field goal. Brownlee last time hit one from 48. The earlier attempt he made was from 47. And the 48-yarder was into the wind, so he, so he has shown them he's got the leg to do it. This is a big kick for him also. He's a transfer sir, for Southern Methodist, so you know he can't really like Texas A&M <laughs> that much. The 49-yard attempt is 14-6, Texas A&M. This would cut the lead to five and give the Huskies some momentum going into the locker room. Got a chance, and it's good. Brandy Brownlee from 47, 48, and now 49 yards. Two of those into a 15-mile-an-hour win, and he has been the real offensive star for the University of Washington. Two seconds to go in the half. There's the kick. Jackie Sherrill wishes that Southern Methodist hadn't dropped football right about now. Oh, he just knows he has it. And so does Chandler, the holder. He said, here's the tee. Let's go do it again. I tell you what, Jackie cannot believe it. No, wishful thinking. He cannot believe that that guy's kicked three field goal, two of them against that win. Not from 47, 48, and 49 yards. Don Jay said... Had it all the way. What a coach. Doesn't even remember last week when he missed two. Now, in this situation, coach, with two seconds to go, do you a uh, nice short split? Yeah, yeah. What you do is you kick it soft and roll it down there. As soon as a defensive man, an offensive man from Texas A&M touches the ball, the clock starts right then. Not until then. And with two ticks, it'll be almost impossible to stop. Brownlee line drives it. One of the up men takes it and goes down. And the clock has not started yet. It's still sitting at two seconds. Because he didn't move. You see, if he'd have moved and advanced the ball, the ball was automatically dead when he put his knee down. You see what I'm talking about? Okay. Words, would, so if he'd have got up and started running, the clock would have started moving. But the ball never got into play. He fell on his knees, and that means the ball is automatically dead. It's almost like a fair catch. Absolutely. And you okay. can fair catch a kick, kick a field goal. That's right. Well, Paul Horning did it to win a big game for the Green Bay Packers with Winston Lombardi. It was not from the 31-yard line, I don't <laughs> think. But, although Brownlee, with the win, might have a shot the way he's kicked today. Well, what they'll do is they'll throw the ball as far as they can to try to get some kind of a, a great play, you know, a lucky play, and try to get it, or they'll fall on it. Well, look, a little conservative. And it looks like they will fall on it, and they will. So Texas A&M content to take a 14-9 halftime lead into the locker room, and that's what they'll do here in College Station, Texas. We invite you to stay tuned for halftime right now to the studio and Tim Brando. All right, Mike Patrick and Lee Corso, thank you very much. We've got a good one underway between Texas A&M and Washington. And coming up here at halftime, we're going to tell you about an upset special in the Southeastern Conference and a defensive struggle taking place in the land they call Death Valley in South Carolina. All of that is ahead on the Railback halftime. 740 and 49 yards, kicks to Anthony Taylor, three yards deep, he'll bring it out. 
A lot of coverage, and he's dropped at the eight-yard line. What great kick coverage by the University of Washington. And number 35, Ricky Meyer, was down to make the tackle. Here are the halftime statistics. And as you can see, Washington with a slight edge in overall possession. But they have had two turnovers in the first half. And Texas A&M with 103 yards, 76 yards, came on the one run by Woodside. Pavlos will start the second half. Had a fine second quarter. Good-looking quarterback. Gurley and Woodside behind him. Woodside on the little delay. Getting back to the 10-yard line. Stuffed by David Rill, number 38, and Bo Yates, the outside linebacker. This time we got Rill, number 38, isolated for you. And watch the... Now watch him sneak up to the, from the left side, moves in a good position, and makes the tackle and drives him backwards. The reason why that the linebackers make all the tackles, 38 and 46, is because the line do a great job of holding those offensive linemen and keeping away from them. Second down and eight. Pavlis on the toss to Woodside. Got a little seam, and he's got the first down out to the 20-yard line. Fine, tough run by Woodside. Got a couple of blocks that held the guys up and made the most out of it. Lewis, cheat number 79, threw a good one for him. Well, they must have listened to us at halftime. Remember, we said he was he went to sleep after. They didn't use him. Now watch him. He makes a good play right here by dropping his shoulder. Good body lean. And he gets an extra two yards. The way to tell a great black is how many yards he makes after he's hit by an opponent. David Toy, number 34, the substitute free safety, filling in for the injured Carroll Hall, was the first man on the tackle. This one won't go for much. A couple of yards as Matt Gurley, the 210-pound junior fullback out of Atlanta, Georgia, carries. Harrison makes a tackle. It's Collin on the sideline. He is the uh, backup quarterback, a young man they would like to redshirt. If they can avoid playing him, uh, that's exactly what they'll do. They'd like to have him on the sideline for a year, but he might be in there today. Second and eight. Aggies. with excellent protection, throws to Woodside. And Woodside gets up to the 29, very near the 30-yard line, brought down by Will Rideout, who was a walk-on, six-foot senior. But that time they brought Woodside out of the backfield number 33 and isolated him on a linebacker, and he sat down in the open area, and for that, Pavlis threw the ball straight right in the numbers, boom. Almost a first down. Stump had a poor first quarter and was replaced by Pavlis, who has thrown the ball very well. Just that much shy, and it will bring up third and in inches. Now we'll understand if Jackie Sherrill told us the truth yesterday. Remember he said they weren't a great quarterback sneak team? They'd like to run a fullback in this situation? Well, we'll see. I'd run a quarterback sneak. Let's see what they do. Horton, number 39, will check into the backfield. Another freshman out of Tatum, Texas. He said it all the way back. And some other scores for you. So we keep you up to date on everything going on. Illinois over East Carolina now. Third and a couple of inches. Full house backfield. And Gurley pounds over the 30 to about the 32. They've got the first down easily. Told us the truth, right? Yep. Fourth down in inches. He went to the big fullback just like he said he would. And how odd does the T formation look? After all the years that we saw it, then it's been gone for so long. Now they come back with a T and it looks like you know, it looks like a Neanderthal format. As a Big Ten football coach, I used to see it too much with Woody Hayes. <laughs> He'd get that Pete Johnson and boom. It's a great short yardage in offensive theory. And they'll send Harris and Waddle wide and give it to Woodside. Woodside dives up to the 34-yard line. Covered by the safety, David Toy and Brian Habib, number 91, underneath. It looks like Joe Avizano, the offensive line coach, got with Jackie Sherrill on the side. Let's test Washington how tough they are. Let's try to run at them. Let's bang them with Woodside. Let's give Woodside the ball enough to see if we can beat them with Woodside. Good strategy. It's working so far. For the senior out of Vidalia, Louisiana, 10 carries, 91 yards in second and seven. Run the option. And Pavlis kept it and paid the price for it. Number 56, Martin Harrison, came over with uh, Will Rideout to make the stop. Now watch, he comes down in here and he tries a nice little option play. You watch number 34 come in from the top of your pick, 
picture David Toy also. Good action. He tucks the ball away right here and gets hit. 34 is a safety man coming up. That's how quick they read that play. He might fake it and go for a bomb over that 34's head next play. Pavlis gained three on that last play. It's third and four. wants to throw it. He's had great protection. Dumps it off the wood side, but the Huskies are all over him. David Rill, the first man to hit him, along with Albert Zapono. And they bring him down well shy of the first down. You know what? They're scouting for you. I bet you at least ten times this year they've gone to that same, same play on third down, and Washington had it scouted perfectly. Sean Wilson on to kick. You'll remember Craig Stump handled the last punt of the first half, and that's Andre Riley deep to receive. Washington with a 10-man front, and they're coming, and they got it. The Huskies blocked the punt, and they had the ball deep in Aggie territory. They showed 10, and they came. You know what happened? I know exactly what happened. They almost blocked one two times ago, and Jackie changed the punter. And he went back to his original punter, and he got it blocked. Now, watch your left-hand side of your picture. You're going to see the block. But it was the punter's fault. Watch him. He gets the ball. Da -dee, da -da. He's reading the label on it. Number 11 comes in and blocks it. That's Williams. the boy Williams, a backup defensive back. And the biggest break of the ball game for Washington. The Huskies have it at the Aggie 15. And Chris Chandler, sore ribs and all, is in there. on the toss only got a yard really stuffed by guy broom number 93 out of galveston okay now the reason what this was blocked is is the punter takes too long watch once you get the ball right now he catches it on let it go one two three he's a three-step kicker boom he kicks it low kicked him in the ankle and I promise you he won't kick the next one. But Jackie knew that, and that's why he put the quarterback stump in there to do the last one. And he was very slow, even taking that first step. Now, Steve Jones is going to limp off for Don James, so they'll bring Vince Weathersby back at the tailback on second and nine. Huskies have not scored a touchdown in this ballgame. Three field goals. Aaron Jenkins, 29, is the fullback, and he'll get the ball and get absolutely nothing out of it. Once again, Guy Broom, 93, was the first man that hit him. He bounced off and then got an awful lot of help. Sammy O'Brien in there. And guys coming up from the secondary, Adam Bob, number 24, the linebacker, Chet Brooks, 27, the safety. you got to wonder about Chandler's arm. He hadn't thrown yep. the football yet this half, and here's a perfect opportunity. We'll see right now if he's ready to play or not. But well, you can see him warming up on the sidelines just before the third quarter started. It was obvious he was in some discomfort, just lobbing the ball back and forth. Franklin to the top of your screen, and Slater goes in motion that way. For Slater, and he couldn't hold it. Pass thrown a little bit behind him, and also he had to turn around and look right into the sun and couldn't make the catch, and Chandler is not moving real well. It's a great call on your part. Now watch, as Slater moves out to the left of your picture, he turns around, he looks right back into the sun. That's why he didn't catch that football. Not only that, Kip Corrington. Corrington. Now watch Chandler get hit again. There's Roper all over him, oh. and Brooks, number 27, is on. Now that was a legal hit yep. because they were going through the action. Randy Brownlee, which will be a chip shot, 30-yard attempt. And he's got it. Brownlee, with field goals of 47, 48, 49, and 30, has cut the lead to two points here early in the third quarter. Texas A&M 14, Washington 12. Put to kick it off. And Harris is deep to receive, standing a yard from the goal line. And Brownlee just drills another one and kicked it out of the end zone on the fly. Brandy Brownlee has done a great job in the kicking game for the University of Washington. And here's the scoring drive that resulted in the field goal. This, is, of course, comes off of the turnover. you got to remember, though, from Texas A&M's point of view, you get a punt block, you've involved them on the 15-yard line, you only give them three points, yeah. you win. You bet. Defense did its job. Pavlis at quarterback. He's five out of eight, 35 yards, one touchdown, one interception. But they have gone away from the passing game a little bit. 
maybe trying to be a little too conservative and protect that lead. Here's the play fake to Lewis. And Pavlos throws. That ball is tipped, and it's out of bounds. Throwing for Anthony Taylor. Take a look at some of the upsets. That is not one, as Clemson, with a shot to really go undefeated this year, wins. Alabama is upset by the Gators and the Florida uh, Gators taking out years of frustration. Maryland stops West Virginia in the final seconds to win by five. Cornell over Penn, four-point final there. Tough start for NC State. Big win for Wake Forest, 21-3. Second and 10, Melvin Collins at fullback. Darren Lewis at tailback, and Lewis on the toss. Washington really strung it out, and Toy came up to make the big hit. But give some credit to Darren Lewis, who just kept driving forward. And Tony Thompson was the man who recovered the ball, although I think they were ruled down. Now, it's going to be from behind a running back, so when you see the ball, uh, watch. He pitches it out to Lewis, number 25. Now, watch the way they come up right here, number 34, Toy. It's a boom, and knocks the ball loose right there at the end. He strips it, and he keeps the football. But I like the way that that Lewis leans in and delivers a blow, and he doesn't take it when he's run the football. Third and three for the Aggies. Pavlis on the option. Lewis picked up the bad pitch. Has the first down and more. Lewis finally knocked out of bounds by Lee Lo Lang, the sophomore quarterback from Los Angeles. But what a play by Lewis to pick it up on the bounce and get the first down. Okay, when it's your day, it's your day. Let me tell you something. Fundamentally, yeah. that's not the thing to do. The pitch out comes in on the line. Pavlis has got it. He pitches out real well to Lewis. Once you drop a ball like that, you try to get it down. But... <laughs> I tell you, when you're hot, you're hot. He runs through number three, Yates, and keeps right on running. What a freshman football player. Darren Lewis, number 25 is. One of the most highly recruited running backs out of high school last year. He'll get it again. Oh, yeah, he got it. Dennis Brown, 302 pounds. A young man who has dedicated this season to his grandmother, the lady who raised him and died this August. Boy, did he lay one on Lewis. Can you believe, like you said, he learned something here. Now watch number 79 Brown stick him and beep, knocks it right back. Welcome to college football. But I tell you what, you mark my words, 25 will read right back after that Brown. Maybe not the next play. Well, he's out of there right now. They put Woodside <laughs> back in, which is a great move. I'm sure Lewis would agree with it. Pavlis to throw. Put some pressure on him. He gets it out to Woodside. Woodside broke one tackle and got up to the 44-yard line. Good play by Will Rideout to make the stop. Really, since uh, Pavlis has been in there, the Huskies have been unable to get any pressure on the quarterback at all. You know why? He's got quickness. He's got a quick release. He's throwing the ball away. That was a hot screen, meaning if the outside linebacker came, he threw the quick screen and he went up down the field. The thing I like about him right now, they're hitting him in all areas. Outside, inside, throwing, running. Nice balance attack by the a and Team right Lewis is back in as Woodside checks out on third and five. Fake to Lewis. Here's the pressure. Pavlis got rid of it. Oh, intercepted. Right in the hands of Albert Tavono. And he couldn't hold it. It was intended for Ross, but the pressure got to Pavlis that time. Now watch. They put the pressure on Pavlis. He sets his feet and he throws it. But this is Ross's fault, number 86. You can't see it in a picture, but he stopped. And the kid thought the guy was going. Yeah, you see him stop right there? He should have kept right on going, and he might have had a chance. Well, you said we wouldn't see punter Sean Wilson again after the block, and sure enough, Craig Stump is in the ballgame. They don't give him the big rush this time, and Stump hits a low-line drive. Riley. And never had a chance. He's down at the 12-yard line. A 37-yard kick, a loss of five on the return as Lafayette Turner came down to make the tackle. for that on Monday night on ESPN. Right now it's 14-9 third quarter. Seven minutes, 14 seconds to go. 14-12, excuse me. Washington trails by two. They have the ball at their own 12-yard line. Weathersby. It's a loss of four. He never had a chance as Sammy O'Brien, the nose guard, just stuffed him in the backfield. Sammy O'Brien has not been playing well, but one of the reasons we talked about it was double team. Here they single block him. He makes a little stunt move, comes up and makes a good tackle, and knocks him down real good. If you can single block the nose man, he got a chance to win. That time, to prove that they can't. They better double team that big guy in the middle. Second down, 13 yards to go. Franklin and Slater, the receiver. 
receivers split left and right, and now Weathersby will go to a wing. Draw to the fullback. Again. Sammy O'Brien right there again, and O'Brien must be listening in on the play. Well, I, th I tell you what they're doing. They're, they're, try they're trying to single block him, and he's too big and strong. He's 6'3", 260. Watch. He does a little twist around, and he's in the back before they can get him. If a guy is good in the middle, like Selman and those great players, you've got to double team or you cannot move the football. Aaron Jenkins, the fullback, never had a chance on the last play, and now it's third and 16. And the Huskies really in no place to gamble. They're back at their own six-yard line, and they have a quarterback with bruised ribs who's not throwing that well. But they'll go to the end zone to throw anyhow, and throws for Slater incomplete. Out there on the coverage was Tony Jones, and he was right with him. Even complete, it would have been well shy of the first down. And the towels are out at Kyle Field. Rod Harris would like to have a chance to return this standing near midfield, and Brownlee will come on to punt with the win in a two-point ball game. Aggies with a nine-man rush, and Brownlee kicked it straight into his own man. Brownlee just almost missed the ball. Someone said it was blocked. I don't think it was blocked. Uh, I'd have to see the replay. It looked like he just uh, kicked it right through. And the Aggies go for the extra point. They get the touchdown. And what a bizarre-looking play that was. And you know what? Of all the coaches in America that have more pride and is the best special teams coach in America is Don James. And watch this one. Even a great coach can't kick for a guy. He just kicks it reels and his six, he almost missed the ball and his 29 in the back i'll tell you what lawrence oh i tell you what you know what happened in that situation he thought he was going to get it blocked from the left and he tries to make an adjustment which is the worst thing you can do watch he sees the guy coming and tries to kick it low and to the right oh. kicked it in the back of his own man and lafayette turner picked it up and fell in the end zone for a touchdown and brownlee for all the wonderful things he has done today really pulled a bad one that time. There's a timeout with Texas A&M now leading by nine over Washington. There is Brandy Brownlee on the sideline who has to be the most distressed individual in the entire stadium. He got a punt off. It wasn't blocked. It's going to come out something like a... Uh, minus four yard punt that results in the touchdown hit his own man in the back bounced off to a texas a m player seven points and he's the same guy that's kicked three field goals four four holy pack what a game it is something it's 21 12 with 537 to go in the third quarter and now scott slater will handle the kickoff duties with the 12th man kicking team and riley and jones are deep to receive and the huskies have to be stunned right now Later, low line drive this time. Picked up by Jones. Jones goes down at the 25. Ronnie Glenn on kickoff coverage. Ronnie Glenn. A 10 yard kickoff return ball at the. Iso on Glenn. Watch him come down. Good two men. Boy, I tell you what. The worst thing about this is not only at, it's after they make the tackle. You know what I mean? He knocked over the blocker, he knocked over the but they get hit harder coming off the field than they do on the field by their own men. It's going to be a real gut check for the Huskies now, down by nine mid-third quarter on the road. And Chandler comes out throwing complete to Franklin up to the 39-yard line. Basil Jackson makes the tackle. 
Well, I'll tell you what, forget it. He's not hurt. Now, that took a shot to hit that ball to Franklin across the middle, and he really stepped forward and threw it. I think he's all right now. Chandler has the Huskies out to their own 40. Ranked 10th in one ball, 12th in another this week. Trying to maintain their unbeaten status. Go on the option. Chandler keeps. It's out to the 34. You have to wonder about a quarterback with bad ribs running the option. I don't want to say anything because Don James is a good friend, but I'll tell you one thing. I question that call, not for as many yards as you're going to make, but Texas A&M is not going to let the pitch out happen. They're going to make the quarterback run, and they're going to hit him. No question. A very questionable call on my part because his quarterback is hurt. Being a four on the last play, second and six. Weathersby, number 22, back in there running back. Chandler checking it off. And he throws sideline out of bounds. And a flag is down. Could have been a procedure penalty. One thing they had trouble with a week ago against Purdue was all the checkoffs at the line of scrimmage later. Right, and they were checking off against what we call press coverage. Dead ball, false start on the offense. Okay, what they do is the defensive backs will come up and crowd the receivers, and he automatically checks out a deep fade, and that's the play through right there. So that'll make it second and 11 as they take the penalty. And Steve Jones back in the ball game along with Franklin and Brian Slater. And now Weathersby, number 22, is back in there. A&M comes with a blitz. They picked it up well. He's got time to throw and throws complete to Franklin at the A&M 45-yard line. Alex Morris on the coverage. Now, you'd see the difference away through that. A lot more confidence. He must be feeling good. Now, I tell you what, the really good thing about that is they put two men on Roper again, that John Roper. They put the tight end and the back because they're worried about him coming from the split end side and hurting Chandler again, number 17. Well, Chandler is the guy that Don James wants at the helm for any comeback effort. They're down by nine. There are his stats so far. He had a great first half against Purdue last week after suffering in the first half. They're trying to go at Roper 83, but Wallace is 6'4", 215, just as quick, and he strips the ball right there and gets it down. Remember, we talked at the beginning of the show, speed and quickness against size, and right now speed and quickness is eating them up. Big break for the Aggies. 3.35 to go third quarter. They have the ball at the A&M 36. Take it to 46, and they'll go with Woodside on the toss. Down to about the 40-yard line. It's Horton, 39. Take a look at what happened so far in the miscue situation. Two of those turnovers have resulted in 14 points for the Aggies. Trace McGuire, the left guard, has limped off. Washington 30-yard line, and all the momentum right now belongs to the Aggies of Texas A&M. And they're running off the left tackle, off the 79, Lewis Cheek, 6'6", 280, all-Southwest Conference football player. It's just blowing the left side of the line. Lewis is running with great, reckless abandon. Texas A&M is becoming a football team right now at this moment. Two minutes, 40 seconds, and counting in the third quarter, 21-12. Richmond Webb, number 56, is in at left guard for Trace McGuire. He's a 260-pound sophomore. And they'll give it to Gurley. And Gurley wrapped up by Brown as he hit the line of scrimmage. 
And now they've got Cheek moving to guard, and Richmond Webb will come in and play left tackle. Gain of one yard on the play ball at the 30-yard line. Second and nine. It's going to be second and nine for Texas A&M. There's Jackie Sherrill. It's 18 years it took Texas A&M to get to the Cotton Bowl, and Jackie Sherrill has taken them two years in a row. Harrison motion. Runs the option. Kept it and got maybe a yard out of it. He had Woodside with him and looked like Woodside might have had some room to run. Yeah, but seeing the option, which is a great play, they will dictate to you who they want to run it. They'd rather have Havis run the ball than Woodside, so they let him run it and make the tackle. Gained only a yard down to the 28, and it's third and seven. Clock running down here in the third quarter, 126 and counting. You can see the Aggies haven't done much in the passing department, but they haven't had to. They've been very opportunistic. Four-man rush. Pavlis with a lot of time. Guns it over the middle, and it's complete to Harris. Rod Harris. Close to first down territory. Let's see how much of his forward progress they give him and where they spot it. Number 79. Lewis Cheek, watch this good play. Put his hands out there nice and slow. Look at him. Got good body position. He already throws it in way to Harrison away. But now, here's a key play. If he doesn't make the first down, what do you do? Do you kick a field goal, make it 24 to 12, or do you go for it? I would say go oh, for boy. it, because the worst thing that can happen is you leave oh, Washington boy. the ball in the 21-yard line, and defense playing great. Especially the way they're going at this point. Oh, yeah. And it is going to be short. Okay, give it to the fullback behind Cheek. And Jackie Sherrill will send in number 39, Larry Horton. They're going to go with their short yardage offense. They'll go to the tee and try for the first down. Horton 39, Gurley 38. And then they've got the tight end, Ross, number 86, in the backfield. Last time, they went over the right guard with the fullback. Gurley, first down. Matt Gurley, the 210-pound fullback, has been able to do the job in those short yardage situations. Okay, that comes from scouting again. They think that... If this guy, Curley, can drive it in there, but the key is Fontenot 67. It's not the fullback, it's that line that exploded off there. Fontenot really came off the ball, and Craig made a great play. First down, they're coming together. They're tough. They're getting better. Keith Woodside is back in there to team with Gurley behind Pavlis on first and 10. Option again, Pavlis for Woodside. Well, as Woodside has dumped at the 17-yard line, Bo Yates, number three, made the tackle from the weak linebacker spot. But you notice the thing I like about them, I told you about, about two quarters ago, you don't know where they're going to attack you now. They go up the middle, they throw the ball, they're outside. Pavlis is the key. If they go in and score right now, they got a chance of being a Cotton Bowl champion. I'll tell you, that far in advance, boy, they're tough. See if they get this play off. It doesn't look like they will. That is going to be the end of the third quarter here in College Station, Texas. And 60,000 are on their feet as Texas A&M is leading the University of Washington, the favored Huskies, 21 to 12. We start the fourth quarter with Texas A&M leading by nine and the Washington Huskies in a whole lot of trouble. A&M with the ball second and seven at the Washington 17. And it looked like the Aggies jumped offside. Sylvester Morgan, the tight end, got an early start. Dead ball, false start on the offense. Still second down. Coaches can stand just about anything except not paying attention. Right? You know why? Because you know when the snap count is. I mean, it's on two. Southern Cal beats Boston College 23-17. We'll have BC next week against Penn State. Play overtime in the Yankee Conference, 52-51. That is a football score. It's a little early for hoops. Second and 12. Pavlis runs the option. They make him keep it stuffed at the 20-yard line. 
good defense that time by the Huskies, exactly what you were pointing out earlier. Yeah, and also they used the sideline as an ally then. They made them run the option play into the short field where if he did pitch it, they could run him out of bounds. You know, Jackie Sherrill takes meticulous notes of little things in the game, and he goes over it with his squad and his staff on Sunday. Pavla so far, 8 out of 13, 47 yards, a touchdown and an interception. Of course, so many things that happen in a football game, it's easy to forget the little things unless you write them down. Big play here. Pavlis, only a two-man rush. He has plenty of time, throws short to his tight end, Sylvester Morgan, and Morgan nowhere near the first down. So they will go for the field goal, I would presume, and what this will do will mean that Washington will need two touchdowns to win the ball game. But it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. Washington almost caved in if Texas A&M didn't want to score. But right now, they're still in this ball game with Chandler. So Slater, out of Stump's hold, will try a 32-yard field goal attempt. He was the first Southwest Conference player ever to get 100 points. Did it last year? And this one is wide right. So the lead will remain at nine as Slater uncharacteristically misses a field goal try. His first miss this season. It's still a nine-point ball game, fourth quarter. Field goal, I think, really critical. It's a nine-point lead. That means a touchdown and a field goal could win the game for Washington instead of two touchdowns. But they've got to get the first one. Chandler throws low for Slater, incomplete at the 32. Covered by Gary Jones. If you joined us late, this is the way the game has gone. Texas A&M jumped on top early. They have scored two touchdowns off turnovers. Pavlis has come in in the second quarter, played very well. Washington's only scores have been four field goals from Brandy Brownlee. But he missed a punt that resulted in an A&M touchdown. Chandler runs the option, keeps the ball, dives forward near the 25. Basil Jackson on the stop along with Chet Brooks, number 27. Now you watch number 83, John Roper on this replay. As he comes across the line of scrimmage, he's taken away the option to the pitch out man, right? Remember, they want Chandler to run a ball so they can do that right there. Brooks can hit him, number 27. Roper at 215 pounds has a 37 inch vertical jump. That's over three feet. Third and five. Big play for the Huskies. They need to get something going on offense. Blitz coming. And they've got Chandler. Lost the ball. A&M has it. Chet Brooks comes out with the football. And that could have been the turnover that did it. Number 30, they put a full all-out blitz. They took a chance, stormed a fort, as this is called, stormed a fort. And there they come, number 48. Batiste makes a good play, strips them, and all of a sudden, they've got a great chance to put it away. But now, remember, Washington's got a lot of pride in their defense. It's not going to be easy. First and 10 from the Husky 12. Lewis in there at tailback. And Lewis gets the ball. And Lewis picked up maybe a half a yard before Dennis Brown flopped him. Boy, I love that play by Dennis Brown that time. He came from the right side all the way to the left side and made the tackle at 302 pounds. Hey, 91's back in there. Hubby, remember he had that shoulder, that elbow? Yep. He's back in there, thank goodness. Michigan State, Notre Dame coming up next. A pair of Heisman Trophy candidates in that one. A couple of teams who had excellent opening games. Second and ten. Pavlis throwing man wide open. Harris couldn't hold it. Just slightly overthrown. Harris was wide open. The coverage by Mike Allman, the freshman. But Pavlis just missed him. Okay, it was a tough to pass to throw to the left side with a right-hander, but the key to this thing is they found number 15, Allman, and they went ISO one-on-one -on, -one on him. That's another great call because they went against the freshman. Really good play there. Looked like Harris may have jumped slightly early and was on his way down when the ball got there. This is an unbelievably big play. Woodside back in the ball game. Can Washington's defense hold again? Pavlis, plenty of time, dumps it over the middle for his tight end. Down 
down to the two-yard line goes Brian Ross. And that should be very, very close to a first down. Ricky Andrews kept him out of the end zone. And they are going to have to measure for the first down. It would either be fourth and inches or first and goal. If it's fourth and inches, you take the fullback and run over the right guard. If it's first down, you take the fullback and run it over the right that's guard. Right, that's right. And it's short again. And AM has shown with Gurley going over that right guard, they've been able to make first down. And I guarantee you that he's going to go over the right guard again because why not? He's made it twice in a row, right. right? The theory is make them stop you. Don't stop yourself. Horton checks in to make that full house T formation backfield. And Lance Pavlis exhorting his Aggie teammates on. Touchdown here. Well, they pretty well have it wrapped up. Although there's no quit in Washington. Gurley went off the left side. Touchdown. <laughs> well, that's why Jackie Sherrill has the big contract and we're up here in the team. No, booth. but that's a good call. And yeah. Then why? Because they knew that the other team expected him to go over the right guard. Now, I'll tell you what, that's a gutsy call, though, because if he hadn't have made it, he'd be second-guessing himself and yep. saying, why in the world didn't I go to the plays that made me work before? 27-12, a 15-point lead, and it looks like they'll go for two. The reason they lead by 15, two touchdowns and two two-point conversions still tie the ball game, so they can put it out of reach with this, they hope. Most times they like 33 and a flat on this one. Which side is on a wing? Pavlis. And it's good to Percy Waddle. Great play by Pavlis. Waddle was not the first receiver. He was looking for Woodside. Okay, now the Woodside is in the flat, but watch this. They come off the left side this time, but they we got it 50% right, right? We said Curly was gonna run it, but we didn't yeah. say which way. So he drives it in there. Now the two-point play, they roll it to the right. Now watch, they try to get the ball to Woodside, number 33 in the flat, but he is covered on the right-hand side of your picture, and all of a sudden, Waddle gets open. Oh, I tell you what, they, they found a quarterback, and that's all they needed. Timeout with 11.38 to go in the game. It's now Texas A&M by 17. the stop and one of the Huskies is down. It was number 57 for Washington, Fred Schmidt, who's a backup offensive lineman. And he was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. That kickoff coverage team, the most impressive thing about that at that particular time is when the ball was stopped, there was nine men. Yeah. There was nine men within five yards of the ball carrier. That's, that's physically impossible to do unless you're crazy. Schmidt is down. We'll check on his condition when we come back. 11.33 to go in the game. A&M by 17. Nine, Agron and Temple. Brandy Brownlee, who kicked four field goals but mishandled a punt. That allowed Texas A&M to score a touchdown. Washington now really needs... An offensive surge, and flags are down before they even get the first snap off. McLeod, number 74, moved. On the offense, no first snap. But they did that time. They, they moved the tight end. And when they moved the tight end, the left tackle, McLeod, moved his hand, and that's a five-yard penalty. That'll make it first and 15 with 11.33 to go. Washington, that counts in sacks, of course. Minus 18 yards on the ground. Chandler changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Yeah. 
Near sideline, nobody there, and the receiver went inside. That was Franklin, and that is the problem that they had against Purdue on those sight adjustments. Both the quarterback and the receiver have to see the same thing, or they'll throw it one way and run the other. Well, he's practicing up. Remember, though, really, in his behalf, he's winning 12-7. That's right, and he has kicked four big field goals, and that has been the Washington offense. Chandler now 11 out of 25, 120 yards, and a set of bruised ribs. Four-man rush under pressure again. Got away from Brooks, but will not get away from Roper, and he's dragged down at the 17-yard line. You know the impressive thing about Roper is that he never quits. You know that they had two men on him at the time. They knocked him down. 16. He flipped it up. He got up, read the program, and chased the guy down from the back. Now watch. 83 Roper at the beginning of the show. Number 66 tries to come out and block him. But now watch. He just never gives up. That's the great thing about a great performance. Speed and quickness. You cannot coach that. You've got to recruit it. Third and 12. The Huskies running out of chances. goes down and the pass was almost intercepted by Dana Batiste who saw what looked like a middle screen developing and dove in there. Let's check the penalty. And when it starts to go bad it really goes bad. That happens when you've got a quarterback that's hurt and you're trying to protect him. And the, a lot coaches teach that. Now watch number 74 McLeod did that on number 23 Wallace because he was too quick for him. Watch Roper. Wow, is he quick. He runs by everybody. But they allowed him to come in because it was a shovel play, but the holding was by McLeod in the middle. McLeod started his college career at Texas A&M. He was here a year and a half before he transferred to Bakersfield. Bad snap, and Brownlee just got it out of there. It looked like it was partially blocked. And it is all Texas A&M. It looked like Anthony Taylor got a piece of that punt. And trying to blow it open here in the fourth quarter. They lead by 17. Excellent field position again. The punt only goes 11 yards, and the fourth quarter has not been kind to Brownlee. There's another bad snap. Uh, two snaps in a row. One was high, one was low, and I tell you what, that's the same guy that was practicing over there. You think you get it right. Was Anthony Taylor appeared to get a piece of it. Woodside. Helpless in the backfield, wrapped up in a hurry. Mark Poole, number 49, was the first man in there. And now tempers are going to get uh, a little on edge because of the situation. Clock ticking down, 10-14. Still a lot of time, but it's a 17-point lead. And the Huskies have shown no inclination to get the ball moving here in the second Also, half. Texas A&M has the win at its back. And that's an added advantage right now in the fourth quarter. It's hard to think of any Washington advantage at this point. They're in a lot of trouble. Pavlis throws complete to the 25-yard line. Gets Woodside out of the backfield. Woodside knocked down by the linebacker, David Rill. Pavlis has really been impressive coming in here. Started the second quarter in place of fifth-year senior Craig Stump and has uh, led the offense rather well. His statistics, not particularly impressive, but he has gotten the job done and thrown the ball well when he had to. He was a highly recruited player here. He, remember, he's redshirted, which means, actually, he's already been here a year. Thrown a lot of short balls, obviously. Now he's going to have to take a timeout here to avoid a five-yard penalty for procedure. We have a timeout with 9-11 to go in the ballgame. Texas A&M 29, Washington 12. Coming up next, Notre Dame and Michigan State, one of the great rivalries in college football, live from South Bend. Jim Kelly and Kevin Kiley will bring you that ballgame. Big play here, third and eight for the Aggies from the 25. Here comes the reverse. Taylor. And he was going to throw the football, and Brown has him and takes him down at the 35-yard line. Well, that was a reverse with an option pass in it. Well, coach defense, though. You notice everybody was in good position. Now watch. He runs. Pavis runs the option. He pitches the ball back to 19. Taylor, who's going to throw the ball. 
Now watch Brown come in and squash him down there. It was a good idea, but a well-coached football team had a defense. Mark Poole, the linebacker, messed up the timing on it. And now Scott Slater will come on to try a field goal, which would be 49 yards. He has the wind at his back out of Stump's hole. And it's way right and short. So Slater has missed two. And Washington once again avoids a score against them after giving A&M the ball deep in its own territory. 8.20 to go. We'll be back in a minute. Part of the Corps of Cadets here at Texas A&M. They are 2,500 strong this year out of a student body of about 38,000. An interesting point. They produce more military officers than any other institution except the service academies right here at this school. Huskies ball near their own 33. They're running out of time and opportunity. Chandler wants to throw in first down. Incomplete for Slater. Roper was out there on a coverage. Slater. I'm, I'm not so sure there's no, there's not three 83s out there. Roper, he starts to come in and he breaks to the outside. He plays real good pass defense. You can chug a man like that legally as long as you hit him once and he's in front of you. 83, John Roper has been a very impressive football player in today's game. And it's been a tough afternoon for Chandler. Only 11 out of 27, 120 yards. And they've been all over. Four man rush, he has time to throw this time. Throws for his tight end. The ball was bobbled but ruled caught. And Chet Brooks chases Jones out of bounds over the bench. And now another official comes up and says that's an incomplete pass because he didn't have control. That was a good call. He was juggling the ball to run across the sideline. Now you get a shot from the end zone. Now remember, he's got to have one foot in, but he's got to have complete control of it. Good call by the official. The reason why it was a good call, he was in perfect position to call that play. Of course, the Aggies got a break. They could have gone after Chet Brooks for a late push, too, because he just shoved him right out of the, right over the bench. Chandler has five straight incompletions. All-out rush. He unloads, and it's incomplete. Short intended for Slater. Brooks was in his face. Tony Jones on the coverage. And this will bring up fourth and ten, and the A&M defense has done it again. One of the things they've got going for now, they've got Chandler uncertain what to do. They're making him check off, and the crowd is causing a problem with the receivers. That, I'll tell you what, the core cadets, it's an impressive place to come and watch a college football game. Brownlee is back into punt. Don that's James, Harris deep to receive. Don James hates to see this play, doesn't he? Oh, yeah. Oh. Brownlee spirals one low out of there. Harris picks it up on the bounce. Got back to the 41. Got a good block. The flag is down, however. 32-yard kick, a six-yard return. Ryan Slater. And it's ruled a clip against Texas A&M. This will take it back 15 yards. Clipping. Want to take the chance. First down. Want to take the opportunity to thank our statistician, John Madry, who's with us every week, and our spotters, Rick Hall and Lance Lowy, who have done a great job up here for us today. Okay, watch the middle of the screen, number nine. Now, you might think that's Greg Stump, and it could be, but they've got two number nines. And you can have as many number nines as you want as long as they don't play on the field at the same time. It wasn't Stump, it was Ronnie Glenn. And Texas A&M, I think, now would like to work on the clock, which is down to 7.43. They give it to Melvin Collins for a couple of yards. Chandler on the sideline. A day he'd rather forget, I'm sure. Okay, Don James has got an interesting piece of strategy here. He's lost this football game, there's no question. He's got Pacific coming up next week, and he's got Oregon. He might be able to beat those two teams without Chandler, but he cannot beat Arizona State October the 10th. So he's got to, got to be careful what he does with Chandler from now on. Second and six. Run the option, toss to Lewis. Great move by Lewis to get a couple of yards out of the play up to the 33-yard line. Right out made the stop. And 
Eugene Burkhalter is in the ballgame for the first time. Number 21 was also in on the tackle. So bring up a third and two. Now under seven minutes. It's a 17-point ball game. The Aggies with the lead, looking for their first win. Lewis. And they come after him hard and stop him shy of the first down. The Washington defense fighting for all it's worth. Bruce Beal, number 48, the first man in on the tackle. And this will bring up a fourth down with 6.15 left in the game. Havis did a nice thing, though, for a young quarterback. He used 29 seconds up. He waited, snapped the ball, used every possible second before he got a penalty call. If you're Don James right now, do you send 10 men after that punter? Absolutely. He's got no choice. He can't beat him with Chandler. He's got to try to block a punt here. And remember, this guy, 9, Stump, though, is gets it off so fast, I bet you they can't block the punt if they send 10. They show a 10-man rush. Stump is back to kick. Here they come, and he got it out of there. That's his job, just to kick the football. Absolutely no blockers back. So you won't get much of a return. Coming up, Michigan State and Notre Dame right after this ball game, live from South Bend, Indiana. And there is a look at South Bend. Jim Kelly and Kevin Kiley are standing by there to bring you that ball game between two top 20 teams who had surprisingly big victories when they opened the season. Washington first and 10 from the 30. A&M comes with a blitz. Chandler hit from behind just as he threw. And that's been the way the day has gone for Chandler as Brooks came on the safety blitz and got him from the blind side. Now you, on the right-hand side of the screen, you see Brooks coming. Now, the reason why they're coming is what do they got to lose, right? They got nothing to lose. Watch him come quickness right there. Number 60 misses him. Number 60 misses him right there. Bostick, and the quickness is too much. If I was Don James, I'd take Chandler out as quick as I could and save him for the Arizona State game. Second and ten. Chandler only two for 11 here in the second half. He'll give it off to Weathersby on the ground, and Weathersby gets about four yards up to the 34. Gary Jones and Chet Brooks made the tackle. We watched the films yesterday, and this Brooks 27 is probably the, the toughest hitter I've seen from a secondary man at 5'11", 191 pounds. Roper has showed some great plays today, 83. Mm -hmm. Yesterday in the films, he rushed the passer almost every time against LSU, and they've done a good job of strategy of dropping him off some today. Brooks was a cornerback. They moved him to the safety spot so he'd be around the ball more, and boy, has he ever. Chandler to throw on third and six. Throws for Slater, who's got a step on his man and couldn't hold the ball. He was behind Tony Jones, and that is a tough catch, looking over your shoulder and having to turn that way, but he just couldn't hold it. Also another reason it was a tough catch, to watch the ball wobble. Now, this is uncharacteristic of the quarterback. He must have slipped out of his hip, but the ball wobbling made it even more tough to catch it and look it into your eye. They'll have to punt it away again with Brownlee. And Harris standing back at his own 25 to receive. Good snap this time to Brownlee. And he gets a low line drive out of there. Harris from the 33. It's a five-yard return after a line drive punt of 34 yards. Timeout, 4.35 to go in the game. The Aggies in control. And it's the Aggies by 17 points. since the second quarter. And he gives up the middle of Larry Horton, the freshman tailback. Here's a shot of Bucky Richardson. Now, this is the quarterback they did not want to play, and they haven't had to. They'd love to redshirt the kid, give him a, a chance to spend a year here, watch practice, understand the offense, and with the emergence of Pavlis today, it looks like they're going to be able to redshirt Richardson. Great-looking quarterback on the hook. Baton Rouge, Louisiana. What a player. Four minutes to go in the game. Give the toss to Horton. And 
what gets him to 44. And how do you get a kid out of Baton Rouge away from LSU? Len Amity was a great quarterback coach at, at LSU. And they've got, uh, what's the quarterback named LSU? Hodson. They got Hodson there. And this kid's not going to play there, so why not come here? Because Murray was leaving. That's right. Now, what what uh, Texas A&M is doing right here is they're using as much of the clock as they can. They're just moving the clock, moving the sticks, keeping it going, take the time, run the ball. They want it. They become a football team when they put Pavlis in the ball game. We'll fill you in on Kevin Murray right after this play. Pavlis back to throw. A little surprising. Throws to his tight end complete to Gary Coster, and Coster has a first down in Washington Territory. What was the story with Kevin Murray? He had a chance to come back to school if he wanted to. Uh, he has not been taken in the pros. We talked to Jackie Sherrill yesterday in his office, and what happened is Murray hurt his ankle. He had, a, he had an ankle operation. He's rehabilitating now. He thinks he could be a great quarterback in the National Football League. And he passed up his final year of eligibility, and that leaves... Uh, Texas A&M with the quarterback controversy that may have been solved today when Pavlos came on in the second quarter and has played very well. 2.55 to go in the game. A&M has wrapped this one up. That's the toss to Harry Jackson, the sophomore tailback. And boy, are they deep in backs. You think, you, think those, you think those guys are good? You know what I mean? They got a guy named Simmons who's the greatest back in the history of football. He's not even playing. He's a fullback coming off a knee injury. Boy, David, David Rill made oh, the stop on that last play. He's had a fine he game. 3.63 or 3.98 grad uh, average at business administration, academic All-American, leader, and co-captain of the football team. Second down, six yards to go. It's been a great day for Jackie Sherrill. Done it on both sides of the ball and on special teams, too. Johnson leans forward across the 40 to about the 39-yard line. There's Chandler on the sideline along with Conklin. Similar story over there. They don't want to play Conklin. They want to redshirt him at Washington. But if Chandler uh, would be seriously injured, they would have to go to him. Well, Chandler was hurt. There's no question because he didn't play with the great enthusiasm he had. And he's been rushed. And, but it's not only his fault. I tell you what, they, they, got, they almost got killed in the kicking game, which is unbelievable, the Don James football team. Sure did. on the offensive line. That'll cost A&M five yards. L.B. Moon, the right offensive guard, leaning forward a little bit, and they caught him. Set. Fault start on the offense. Still third down. They got great, great tradition here, don't they? Oh, they do. Oh, I tell you what, I went down and looked at the graves of Reverly 1, 2, and 3. They're, they're right at the end zone there under ESPN sign, right. and they got the grave where they can look up if they have to and see the scoreboard. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Those, that's the three mascots that passed away here, Reverly 1, 2, and 3. Reverly 4 is retired. Retired. Yeah. What does a retired dog do? Eats, sleeps, yeah. and does what the rest of us hey, retired people do. Dogs that are not retired do that. Yeah. Pavlis leads them out on third and eight, and he wants to throw. And right here, they're trying to work on their offense, and they want Pavlis to get as much experience as possible, complete to the tight end, Dillon. <laughs> And there is Reveille 5. Here at Red Collie. The first one was not. The first one was a stray dog that the students ran over. It was a, it was a black and white dog that ran over with a Model T. Isn't that something? Look at that dog. We had a beautiful animal, American Collie. He's one and one right now. He's barking for Pavlis. <laughs> yes, he has 27 seconds to go. And Don James takes off the headset. It's time to head for the bus. Let me tell you something. Eight straight bowl games. That's that saying up for you? Yeah. Second vice president of the American Football Coaches Association. And you can't get a higher honor than being a, an officer in our profession. I'll tell you what, if Don James coached uh, in the East or the Midwest, he'd be a contender for Coach of the Year honors all the time because he'd get that much more publicity. Instead, he is on the West Coast, but seems to be extremely content to be out there and has done a wonderful job with that program. Good Stump will now come in to punt on fourth and six. Yes, he is. And deep to receive, uh, Andre Riley. Dead ball. False start on the offense. Still fourth. False start will cost them five. 
five yards. Six yard line. Fourth and eleven. A little surprised that they're going to punt the football instead of going for it, but uh, Washington showing a 10-man front to come after them. And do, and Stump got it out of there. He's also run into, and there's a flag down. Riley fair catch. And Texas A&M is going to get the football back as they ran into the punter. I tell you why they went for it. And, I mean, went for the punt. They need that kind of practice. You see, okay. you can't get that kind of practice on a practice field. The stands. Good point. You can't get that like that, and this is the only time you could get it, and it was a great call by Jackie Sherrill. And uh, for the people who think Jackie Sherrill might have been trying to run it up, I mean, he doesn't need any defense from me, but why they were throwing late in the ball game, you got a redshirt freshman quarterback that you've apparently made a decision he's going to carry you. You need to work him. Absolutely, there's no question. He didn't do it against Don James. He did it for his own team, and sure. that's very important. Don James knows that. So on the penalty running into the kicker, you'll get the uh, first down for a and at the Washington 31 with five seconds to go, and Jackie Sherrill celebrating on the sideline with his ball club. a and will go to one and one. Washington will drop to two and one. And Lance Pavlis, I believe you are going to see a lot of this young man for the next few years for Texas a and &M. That's it, Jackie Sherrill crossing the field. The cadets running onto the field. One of the other great traditions here is when AM scores, for every point, you get to kiss your girlfriend in this game. What, what if you were a girl and didn't like the guy that took you to the game? Shouldn't have come today, I tell you. They got 29 against Washington's 12, and the Coral Cadets celebrate the first Aggie win of 1987. You have the feeling there will be several more, and not only this year, but other years to come for Jackie Sherrill, who had the best recruiting class of anyone in college football this year. Just got some incredible players. We'll be back with more from College Station, Texas, in just a moment.